drop it low. Drop it low. Drop it low. Hello guys, welcome back yet again. Yes, we are back again for another game. Today is Sunday and we're going to be doing, I think, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday again. Um, we're, I'm going to have to look what games are going to be on uh, for that. But the commentary is on. 
Um, I'm going to put the commentary on um, as well. So it is Man United versus Liverpool. And it is the quarterfinals of the A... No, FA Cup. And it's today at 3.30. So we're going to be streaming a long time. And we're going to listen to the commentary as well. So everyone's going to be piped. This is going to be a good one. And here we go. Let's do this. Come on. Let's do this. Who's going to win? We don't know. But I'm hoping it's going to be Man United. Come on. Glory, glory, Man United. Let's go. The first substitution taking Sterling off. You kill him a little bit. But, you know, he was the player to take. Brilliant for Malagusta down the right-hand side, going past his man, whipping the ball in. It's a decent enough first touch to Nicholas Jackson, but he's leaning back, and that's where you're talking about the composure, awaiting the ball for the ball to come down a little bit more. So, in the end, you've got yourself right, and you're not going to hit it over. What a chance that was. Massive cheer for Ben Chilwell, who's... Well, they were talking, weren't they? Chelsea about undergoing potentially a specialist assessment the former Leicester player onto the field in place of Kukurea whose opening goal feels a heck of a long time ago now Chilwell who was named in the England squad early this week eight minutes added time at Stamford Bridge at the end of normal time a cup tie that has had so many wonderful ingredients to it it's and not, it's not it's, finished it's not what Leicester want to hear though eight minutes plus another 30 2-2 two, two. unless they can find the winner with 10 men Chilwell on for Kukurea. Here's Conor Gallagher for Chelsea. They struck in stoppage time to beat Leeds in the fifth round. Can they sense another dramatic FA Cup winner here? Crossfield Gusto, high to Chilwell. Little flicky won it first against a tiring Hamza Chowdhury. Shukwamaker escapes down the left-hand side. Shukwamaker for Chilwell on the overlap. Sorts his feet out, crosses in, steered away by Fass. Well, it will be the story of Chelsea's season, Scott. With all the chances they've had, if they can't convert, if they can't go through... Here is Conor Gallagher, massive credit to Leicester City. Gallagher touches it on to Jackson. Back to Shukwamaker in the box. Palmer to Shukwamaker! That will win it for Chelsea! Carl yes! Yes! The yes! It's Chelsea who got the stoppage time winner. Get in Chelsea there, Chelsea! to Wembley for the FA Cup semi-final, surely. What an impudent flick! We're on the road to Wembley. We're on the road to Wembley. Let's go! It's such a desperate moment for Valley and City. The ten men have been broken down. Chelsea three, Leicester two in stoppage time. Ah, it's absolute heartache for Leicester, but it's absolute brilliance from Carney Chukwemeka. Came into the side of the start of the season, did really well. And then had a long-term injury. He's come back, he's found it hard to get back into the side and get minutes on the pitch. But ever since he's been on the pitch today, he's looked dangerous. He's looked direct. Yes, he's in there, Chelsea. And it's oh a wonderful my goodness, one team with Cole Palmer. Cole Palmer with a lovely little flick. I know this is only just like this. This, this is. I know this is a Man United one, but Chuck come on. He's through on goal. Yes, in there. Does he have the composure? Does he have that ice cold mentality? Absolutely, sticks it underneath the goalkeeper, and it's difficult to see how Leicester can come back from this now. You just have to admire the silk of Cole Palmer. One of England's best players at the moment of that, there is no doubt. Palmer influential for Chelsea again today. They lead 3-2, and we've had three of the eight added minutes against the 10 men of Leicester. Palmer's ball up the right-hand side. Jakob Stelarczyk, the goalkeeper, will get to it. The 10 men with one final opportunity here to force extra time. What a wonderful effort it's been in the second half from Leicester City, but since Doyle was sent off, they've very much been on the back foot. Absolutely. You know, from that Desazi mistake, it was all them and getting about to 2 2. There was a point where you're thinking, well, if there's going to be another goal, it's going to come from Leicester. Chelsea unable to stem the tide. Then the boos of a substitution of a player not being taken off that the fans feel should be taken off. But, you know, what you say about Poch, he did take Sterling off in the end, and what he did also do was put Chuck Wemeka on first and foremost and he has been excellent he really has and suddenly Chelsea are winning all of the second balls Caicedo gets in front of Dewsbury Hall 
Well, Enzo Maresca's Leicester City can take so much from this and they will use it, I'm sure. No, they can. Absolutely, Joe. I mean, look, you know, they've got the international break as well, so some of these will be going off, but the rest, he can certainly give a good few days off. They've given absolutely everything here and I think what they've shown is they can live in the Premier League. Just got to get there. Pochettino, just seen on our monitor in the commentary position, punching the air with delight. Still just under uh, four added minutes to go of stoppage time. 3-2 Chelsea lead Leicester. Harry Winks is deflected cross, headed away by De Zassi. Scoop further clear by Chukwemeka. Many gaps at the back now for Leicester City. Chukwemeka's all alone to the left if Palmer can spot him. Palmer's the sort of player with the vision that he can. Great sweeping ball by Palmer to find Chilwa. Where would Chelsea be without Cole Palmer this season? Chukwemeka edge of the box gets it back from Gallagher Cardi Chukwemeka dancing through the middle and now Palmer with a snapshot that's blocked would be harsh on Leicester to concede another we've got three added minutes to go with Manchester United against Liverpool coming next on Talk Sport an unbelievable FA Cup quarter final weekend and we'll have the semis at Wembley and the final two I have to say Scott it's been one of the most enthralling games I've covered all season well, it's been one of the most enthralling games since Bournemouth Luton that I covered. <laughs> since Wednesday for you. <laughs> since Wednesday. I've had some You've crackers had all this, of it week. this week. Some crackers. It's been a great game of football. Again, you know, the FA Cup at its very, very best. Two teams going for it. Not sit no one sitting back. Oh, great turn by Palmer. He's wriggled away from Cody. He's tugging him back. Clear foul. Obvious yellow card. And in terms of timings in the game now, two and a half minutes of added time to go. Chelsea three, Leicester two. Carney Chuk will make it with what looks like the goal to send Chelsea into the semi-finals of the FA Cup. Yeah, Malagusta was just running down the right as if they were chasing the goal there. It's like, no, I don't even think the ball should be played in there. I just think they should just keep it between themselves. It's 11 v 10, make the pitch big, keep the ball as much as possible, don't give the ball back. They did it to Leeds and they've done it to Leicester Chelsea. Late goals to lead 3-2. The sun is out at Stamford Bridge as if to mirror the mood in the stadium among the home fans now. Cole Palmer's left-footed free kick is cleared away by the wall. Less than two minutes of added time to go. Leicester have given it everything. Vestergaard's playing as a centre forward now. I've seen Vestergaard score late goals on this ground in the past, but it's all Chelsea. Ben Chilwell darting into the box, tried to chip it beyond Chowdhury, who got back to clear. Corner for Chelsea, 90 seconds left. Scott Minto, who won the FA Cup in the 90s with Chelsea, your old team heading through as it stands. As it stands, and to be fair to Chelsea, and Ben Chilwell has come on and done very well, gives some width down that left I think I think Ukure has actually defended very well but not been able to get forward but Chelsea again game management seeing the game out and Leicester desperate to try and get hold of the ball and get the ball up the pitch but they, they can't get hold of it at the moment well, they tried to take the corner short there Chelsea and then they gave it straight back to Stolarczyk one minute to go for Leicester one of the eight added minutes this is it Stolarczyk in the pink top away to our right he's just going to hammer it forward and long here Chelsea three Leicester two Chelsea heading for the semi-finals Leicester trying to force extra time, but Justin's touch is heavy. Chelsea have it back with Malo Gusto, stealing forward up the right. Seemingly endless energy. Now Noddy Madueke takes over, beyond Justin. He's waved beyond three, and he's curled it! Oh, what a way to seal it for Chelsea! Noddy Madueke off the bench to produce a wonderful solo goal to end the cup tie that has been absolutely magnificent. You can't even start to tell the story of an afternoon like this, but there's one thing certain about the ending, and that is that Chelsea will take their place in the last four of the FA Cup. Madueke weaved past two tiring Leicester challenges and an effort that curled and looped over the helpless Stolarczyk. It's the subs that have come on and won it for Chelsea in the end. Chelsea four, Leicester two, and that finally is that. Well, 3-2, 4-2, it doesn't really make a difference. And if you look at the stats, Chelsea certainly deserve to have won this game. But that doesn't really tell the full story. 2-0 up, in control, back to 2-2. Leicester looking like they could go on and win it. The fans against the team, or certainly against the manager's decision of a substitution. But they found a way to do it. So, so important. This is a game, Joe, that Chelsea could not afford to lose got to get to the semis got to get to the final really obviously depends on the draw massive win Chelsea are going back to Wembley
This time for the FA Cup semi-final. After one of the best last eight ties of recent years in this famous, most wonderful domestic cup competition. Stamford Bridge shakes, roars, cheers to the sound of Chelsea glory after 98 remarkable minutes against the championship leaders Leicester who gave it everything and very nearly caused a massive shock. Chelsea 2-0 up at half-time, Kukurea and Palmer the goal scorers, Raheem Sterling who had an awful afternoon had a penalty saved, it looked like Chelsea were all but through so Leicester fought back in the second half, an incredible own goal from Axel Dizassi from four 40 yards to bring them back into contention and then Steffi Mavadidi's brilliant curling effort made it 2-2 but then Leicester had Callum Doyle sent off and though Chelsea were denied a penalty which was cancelled after a VAR review they spent the rest of the game camped in Leicester territory and then quality and youthful exuberance for this young Chelsea side off the bench was able to tell in the end Carney Chukwameka and Noddy Madueke with stoppage time goals to turn this into a winning afternoon for Maurizio Pochettino and Chelsea will be back at the National Stadium for the semi-finals. Chelsea 4, Leicester 2. Wow, Scott Parker, uh, Scott Minto. <laughs> um, listen, I've forgotten your name. In the midst of all of that football, I've completely and, forgotten your name. And I thought we were in this together, eh? <laughs> Never. What a game of football. Extraordinary. It had literally everything. Oh, mate, I mean, this is what the FA Cup was all about. We talked about the, the Wolves Coventry game. You know, obviously, it was a different result in terms of the championship side not winning here, but we saw absolutely everything. And, you know, in a way, it sums up Chelsea, how they've been the last 18 months. You know, this time is a good ending, but there's no real control over it. You know, they were 2-0 up. They missed the penalty. A wonderful opportunity, a one-on-one. -on -one. You know, the manager getting booed. You don't know what you're doing because he's making a substitution and not taking Raheem Sterling off. And a, an incredible own goal. Leicester coming back into it. 2-2. Two -two. You don't know which way it's going to go. A penalty. It's not a penalty. It's a yellow card. It's not a yellow card. It's a red card. They're down to 10 men. Where's he going to score from the free kick? No, he doesn't. Which way are we going to go? We're going to get extra time? No, we're not. It's not just 3-2. Two, it's 4-2. Oh, my goodness. I'm surprised you got Scott right, eh, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> my head is completely gone. And have a look, this is, this is one thing, right? We'll talk about Sterling in a minute, because it's an important subject. And the booing of the Chelsea fans, very, very important subject, right? But let's have a look for the positive for Chelsea here. They're through for a start. They've given us a, a fully entertaining, with Leicester, a fully entertaining game of football. But Palmer, Chucklemaker and Medweke have scored goals today. They're 21, 22 and 20 respectively. This is, this is impressive from Chelsea in terms of the future for the football club. Then the fans have just got to be patient. Isn't this the game that proves that this is a long-term thing for Chelsea? Look, you know, we, we live in a world that is football, a world of the here and now. And I do think, and I've been critical, that you can't buy so many players for the future because you still need to have those senior pros nursing these younger pros alongside him. And, you know, you can say this need the senior pros. Thiago Silva, well, his wife said what she said and then Raheem Sterling and he does what he does here. So, you know, it, it's not ideal. You, you need the right type of people. I, I, both of them are, by the way, and I'm not criticising them personally and, and definitely not professionally. They're just going through a bit of a bad time at the moment. But yes, they have the talent, but it's not easy, Aid. It's not easy to just say, well, look at them. We'll just wait. Well, wait, how long do you have to wait for? You know, the Chelsea fans have been used to the here and now. They've almost been wired towards, you know, it's absolutely we win trophies. And if we don't look like we're going to win trophies, a manager goes, but a ready-made world-class manager. And we've already got ready-made world-class players. It's a completely different philosophy. So I get where the Chelsea fans are coming from. But, you know, there needs to be a mixture. But uh, is there talent? Oof, absolutely. But you're asking them to do it on a week-by-week -week basis. You can't just do it every now and again. It's a Chelsea football club. Should be chasing a Premier League title, a Champions League title, year in, year out. And they're not. They're a million miles away. So, again, I repeat, I get it where the Chelsea fans are coming from. I don't necessarily agree with the, the philosophy and the way they've gone and missing out on players like, say, James Madison. 
obviously at Leicester last season and look at the season he's been having because he's over 25 not going to go for him what a player he would have been for, for Chelsea but the bottom line is they do have talent it does take time but is he going to be given time we'll have to wait and see Scott Minto won the FA Cup with Chelsea. Just uh, make sure you're aware of that, OK? And this is Scott Minto with us on TalkSport. Uh, I'll talk about Sterling in a second and the booing, but let's get half-time at West Ham, Ian Abrams. West Ham 1, Villa nil. The goal on 29 minutes. Sue Fowles ball in from the right-hand side for Mikel Antonio. Diving header, not unlike Keith Houchin all those years ago in a cup final for Coventry. This time he buried the ball beyond the goalkeeper, Martinez, who was beaten again just before half-time. Mohamed Kudus putting the ball in the net. I'm not sure it was handball against Kudus or a supposed foul on the goalkeeper from the initial corner but the goal was ruled out. West Ham have had to ride their luck a little bit at the back. Watkins has been dangerous Adrian but not that dangerous so far. At half time it's West Ham 1, Aston Villa 0. Uh, Scott Minto let's get into the crux of this Sterling debate. He's, uh, he's had a shocker today basically even though in the midst of all this he set up Cole Palmer's goal so we need to bear that in mind. There is a positive in there for Raheem Sterling but he's missed a pen he's missed a sitter he sent a free kick into orbit and Poch was booed for leaving him on when he took Mudrick off the fans felt that Sterling should have gone first five minutes later or so he does take Raheem Sterling off and there's still some boos and ironic applause there as well I've spoken to a couple of Chelsea fans um, messaged them and they basically said absolutely he was booed it's been disgraceful. First tries to steal the ball away from Palmer for the penalty. Then that disgraceful free kick. Now Mudrick is off instead of Sterling. Absolute joke. They expect more from one of their senior players. And I think they've got every right to expect better as well. Yeah, do you know what? There's, there's a fine line between saying, do you know what, I'm having a bad time, but I'm still going to step up and take responsibility and actually making it all about you when realising, OK, it's not my day today. Someone else will have a better position to, to score. And I... You know, again, I go back to, and it may sound strange, I think Raheem Sterling has been an incredible player. I'd hate to have come up against him as a fullback because he can go both ways and he can run in behind. He makes loads of assists. But in terms of striking the ball, he's not the best striker of the ball. So when it comes to a penalty, you know, with Cole Palmer, as you said at half time, the penalty he took amongst a few others, but the one in particular that stands out, the gun against Manchester City, the pressure here at Stamford Bridge and against his old side, against the best team what, you know, in the Premier League. We'll have to wait and see whether that's the case at the end of this season. He stepped up, he took the pressure technically, mentally, absolutely bang on it. He didn't hear, I don't know why. And then I do think Pochettino then, and I think you're absolutely right to mention it at half-time. Look, if it happens again, I'm sorry, Cole's having it. I'm taking the responsibility here. And look, he is a nice guy, and I do think he's a really good coach. But sometimes you can be too nice. You have to be ruthless. You have to say, Rakim, this is not your day today. If something like this happens again, I'm, I'm telling you, Cole Palmer takes the next one. Whether it's a penalty, whether it's a free kick, if he wants it, he takes it. And that's where he's got to be a bit more ruthless and a bit more nasty. And I don't think he's got that in him. And that's a worry going forward. He only waited five minutes and it was right, absolutely, to take Rakim Sterling off. I understand why perhaps he didn't take him off first time round because he would have been seen to be killing him. But you've still got to do right what's, what's right for Chelsea Football Club. And the fact he took him off at five minutes later, I think, gives him a little bit of grace in terms of that. And look, people might have booed Rakim Sterling, but then they cheered him off and realised he's still trying his best. But this is not your day. Don't step up and he needs to be taken out the firing line. And in the end, he did. And what happens? Madueke and Chuck Womeka come on and, and score brilliant goals. Uh, if you're wondering what the booing is in the background is because I'm at Old Trafford where Man United are going to take Liverpool on live and exclusive in the FA Cup quarterfinals on Talk Sport. And Liverpool have just come out. The United fans uh, giving them their usual reception. Axel Disaster. That, 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 that's for goal. you, by the way, Aid. You yeah, get cheers, my dear. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's for Scott Parker, to be honest. Um, <laughs> Axel Disaster cost £40 million. Pounds. That's one of the best own goals I think I've ever seen. It's magnificent, isn't it? Oh, do you know what? He'll be thanking the young lads for coming on and, and making sure that they've got through to the next round because, you know, Joe was right to mention Rakim Sterling, but obviously Axel, well, what he's done there. It's just horrendous, and if it happened 10 times out of 10, he wouldn't make a pass like that again. You know, Robert Sanchez, you could say, was too far out but and, and should be covering his goal and be in line between the ball and the goal just in case that happens, and maybe the goalkeeping coach will say that, but it's basically just come off the side of his foot. He's absolutely larriped it, and it's a horrendous one. And what it did was give the psychology back to Leicester. 
I do feel even at 2-0 at half time I'm thinking right Leicester going to come out and really go for it but actually Chelsea had a little bit more control up until that moment from that moment probably until the maybe just before the sending off Leicester were absolutely brilliant they really were they came back into it they got the second goal wonderful goal it was you have to say for Mabadidi and if anything it looked like they would go on and get the winner but the moment they went down to 10 men it was almost a question of playing for penalties and are Chelsea good enough to break down this side and in the end it was a couple of bits of individual brilliance they didn't really need it from Madueke but the Chukwemeka goal was the big one and him and Cole Palmer just 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 sensational well let's uh, finish this uh, roundup of the game uh, by talking about Cole Palmer he scored a goal today I think it's a more tricky finish than, than people might realize because the ball was fired in at him and he's found the corner of the net on the run uh, and the one two he played with Chukwemeka for the goal it's a lovely little flick it's perfectly weighted even though it's a flick it's a back heel he's just a stunning footballer he's had a brilliant 90 minutes he has the, you know, realising that if it had just done it, played the ball in front of his right leg, then the defender probably would have got there. So he let it run just a little bit behind him. First of all, to have the football intelligence to understand that, then to have the technical ability to let that happen, and then the, the with, with the, the sort of side of his foot, but a little bit behind him, the, the weight of pass to be perfect for Chuck Mecca to do that first time, but the keeper can't come out and save it. Nothing short of sensational. And again, that pretty much summed him up all season I, I, I cannot wax lyrical enough for this kid who has left the best club in the world because he wants to play he, he you know he wants to play football and he's come to a hornet's nest here and yet he stood up for the whole season and said you know what I'm going to be that senior pro that you're looking for don't look at my age don't even look at my Premier League appearances listen to what I say look at me in the eye give me the ball and I don't care where you play me whether it's as a number 10 whether it's a false nine it's on the right or the odd time on the left I will find a way to affect the game and in this atmosphere at the moment again we go back to what Chelsea have been used to for the last 20 years about how the philosophy of the new owners come in has made it really difficult for players to really shine and it's going to take time and no one wants to wait he has been the standout player and you know I, I salute him and I, I, I'd love to see him I'm going to be at Wembley actually as a fan watching the, the Brazil game I hope he plays I uh, definitely hope he's on the plane in the Euros because he can play a big part Scott Minto brilliant commentary thank you very much that's the former FA Cup winner Scott Minto after Chelsea we thought it might be going to extra time we had more late goals like we did at uh, Wolves yesterday Chelsea 4 Leicester 2 so Chelsea join Coventry and Manchester City in the semi-finals of the FA Cup one more to go as both Manchester United and Liverpool warm up here at Old Trafford kickoff here is at 3.30 so just over half an hour away kickoff at Elland Road in the Championship is just a couple of minutes away it's Leeds against Millwall Natalie Pike yeah there's a real feeling of excitement here today the teams are just about to come out and the Leeds fans they know how close they are to going top of the league they need to win today by two or more goals they have a lot of reasons to be optimistic they remain unbeaten in the league here all season and they've won their last seven in a row Millwall also have lots of reasons to be optimistic despite being 16th in the table four points above the drop they're unbeaten in the four games since Neil Harris's return picking up 10 points. That's the same number they won in the final 10 games under Joe Edwards. The teams are in the tunnel here as Leeds take on Millwall. Indeed, they do. What a day already. Chelsea for Leicester 2. Elsewhere, by the way, uh, West Ham leading Villa 1-0. Women's Super League, Liverpool 3, West Ham 1, a result. Manchester United beat Bristol City 2-0 at League Sports Village. And Manchester City 4-1 winners at Brighton this afternoon. Tottenham at half-time lead Leicester by a goal to nil. League 2, Salford are playing just up the road. They lead Morecambe 1-0 at half-time. And earlier in the National League, Halifax were 2-0 winners away to bottom club Oxford City. We now turn our attention to Manchester United against Liverpool to see who will join Chelsea in the semi-finals of the FA Cup after they beat Leicester 4-2 live here on Talk Sports. This is Talk Sport, and the third FA Cup quarterfinal is off and running. Jackson lays it square to Correa! There to tap in, his first goal for Chelsea! 6,000 Leicester fans behind the goal trying to put off Sterling here. Here he goes, right footed, saved by Stelarczyk! What a stop! Sterling racing up the inside left channel now though, he's beaten the defenders again, he's pulled it back, and it's tucked in by Palmer. Oh, Dizassi, terrible back pass, it's going to go in! 
options from Axel Dizassi. Mabadini corner of the penalty area. Couple of step overs. Right footed effort. What a wonderful goal. Steffi Mabadini. But the foul took place outside the penalty area. In fact, he's going to be sent off here. There's a red card. There'll be no penalty kick. It'll be a free kick to Chelsea. Palmer to Tsukwamaka. That will win it for Chelsea. He's waved beyond three and he's curled it! Oh, what a way to seal it for Chelsea! Noni Madueke off the bench to produce a wonderful solo goal to end the cup tie that has been absolutely magnificent. The Emirates FA Cup live on TalkSport with Carling, the official beer partner of the Emirates FA Cup and Adobe Women's FA Cup. 18 plus, please drink responsibly. Here they are, the racing lovers of the UK, phone in hand, ready to play the Coral Reward Shaker. Look at them shake. We've got the regulars at the race course shaking their phone with confidence. And look, they've won a free bet. Parents on a day out just happy to be here. They've done it too. An odds booster for them. Lovely stuff. Everyone's a winner. Play Coral's free Reward Shaker to win guaranteed daily rewards and offers. Coral, we're here for it. 18 plus UK. Max one reward or offer per player per day. Reward restrictions, requirements and T's and C's apply. Take time to think. McDonald's winning sips is back. Last year, there were over 2 million winners. This year, we hope you're thirsty for more. You can win limited edition Coke glasses, amazing Mackey's food and merch, festival tickets, or even one of our weekly 10 grand cash prizes. Play winning sips now on medium or large soft drinks. Fill your cup, try your luck. Promotional drinks only, end 16th of April. App registration may be required. 18 plus, UK only, terms apply. Join the nation in cinching it. Buy your perfect car online. And get first class assistance from start to finish. Your new car, madam. With friendly customer service available seven days a week. Hello, this is Cinch. How can I help you? An expert walkthrough of your new car when it's delivered. Mm. And a fat free 14 day money back guarantee. Hardly surprising, Cinch is rated excellent on Trustpilot. So join the nation in absolutely cinching it. Search Cinch and buy your next car today. Return subject to mileage restrictions, T's and C's apply. We're Bet MGM Sports and Casino. We know things aren't always golden. That's why we offer you the tools to keep your place safe. Set timeouts to always ensure you take a break when you feel like you need it. Set reality checks so you know exactly how long you've been playing. And set deposit limits to help control what you spend. Stay golden with BetMGM. Play responsibly. 18 plus. You know how the best ideas come in the shower? Well, here's one for you. Switching to an energy-efficient shower head is more efficient because it saves water and could save you up to £40 a year on energy bills. And that's worth singing about. Shower, save, repeat. It all adds up. Find more energy-saving tips at gov.uk forward slash save energy. Worn out, busy day. Don't let tiredness get in the way. When you just can't get going. Barocca can help you face the lag. Formulated with 11 vitamins and minerals, including vitamins B6 and 12 to help support energy release and reduce tiredness and fatigue. Barocca, face the lag. Barocca contains vitamin C, B vitamins 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 9, 12 and magnesium and zinc. Ever tried to place a bet and found it doesn't really reflect you? It doesn't allow you to flex your savvy knowledge of the sport. Then you need Bet Builder from Virgin Bet. And it's another booking for the away team. Choose your favourite markets like corners, cards or even hitting the crossbar and personalise your bet until you look at it and think, nailed it. Beautiful, isn't it? You can also pick from pre-made Bet Builders if you like. Make it your own with Bet Builder from Virgin Bet. T's and C's apply. 18 plus. Bet responsibly. Be gambleaware.org. Fired up and raring to go. It's a day full of first-class football coverage. Game day. Featuring a super savvy squad of footballing experts. FA Cup Game Day Live. On Talk Sports. What's the biggest game in English football? Put together the two most successful sides from two huge cities in the northwest of England that have competed in culture, music and football for decades. Give it a scenario where if one loses, it looks like it's season over. But for the other one, success means they continue the dream of sealing a quadruple. 
Winning this game doesn't just mean success for you, it also damages them. Let's not forget that one of the managers has announced he'll be leaving. Others are regularly announcing the other is due to depart soon. Both trophy winners in the last 12 months or so. And it's the FA Cup, and these are two of the most successful sides this wonderful competition has ever seen, winning it 20 times between them. TalkSport, and only TalkSport, brings you a classic cup clash live from Old Trafford, Manchester United against Liverpool. And as a Man United fan, I believe we're going to win the game. Why? Because we have to. From a Manchester United perspective, the only word I can use is this is painful. It's awful to watch. And that changing room has looked problematic from the start, hasn't it? This club is not being run like a club of the highest stature. I think everything gets blown out of proportion, whether good or bad. I'm excited to see them back once everyone's fully back fit. Casemiro! They lead by Gordon Hill in the 89th minute. Rasmus Hoyland, who turns and fires in. An amazing goal at the Stratford end. Liverpool, I just think you've got such a great squad. It's a brilliant header. Supreme header from Virgil Van Dijk. Then the whistle is blown and Liverpool beat Chelsea in a cup final again. Liverpool 3, Southampton 0. Liverpool quadruple is still on. I would use one word to describe Liverpool relentless. They are a relentless winning machine. There's nothing like Manchester United against Liverpool. The Manchester United supporters know they have to win this game. It's huge. It's always huge. This just seems that little bit huger, doesn't it? Good afternoon. I'm Adrian Durham. What a privilege to be here at Old Trafford for TalkSport. And we love the FA Cup on TalkSport. What about these quarterfinals? We've had a five-goal thriller, a six-goal thriller, and City comfortably through the holders into the semi-finals. What can these two here serve up live and exclusive and only on Talk Sport, yes, the only national radio station with commentary of the final quarterfinal, Manchester United against Liverpool, is this one. Talk Sport, so keep it right here. Let's get the teams, first of all, from your match commentator, Jim Proudfoot. Well, United make two changes to the side that beat Everton. Brazil announced this morning that Casemiro was injured and that he'd withdrawn from their squad, so his omission is no surprise. Johnny Evans out as well to prompt a defensive reshuffle. So wan is back, having sat out the last couple of months. Dallow moves from right back to left back to accommodate his return. Lindelof going in to centre half. There's a recall as well for Rasmus Hoyland, who scored seven goals in his last six games. So Fernandez drops back to the number 10 role. Liverpool make three changes to the side that beat Sparta Prague so handsomely on Thursday. Van Dijk returns at centre half. So Joe Gomez switches to right back and Bradley sits out. McAllister replaces Bobby Clark in midfield, but the youngster is fit enough to be on the bench. And Diaz is in for Gakpo. So Manchester United have a Nanari goal. Wan Bissaka, Lindelof, Varane, and Dallo. McTominay and Maynou. Garnacho, Fernandes, and Rashford. And Hoyland. Kelleher's in goal for Liverpool. Gomez, Kranzer, Van Dijk and Robertson. McAllister, Endo and Sobeschlai. Salah, Nunes and Diaz. And Mount is back on the United bench, having been out with a calf injury for the last four months. Alongside him, the returning Maguire, Eriksen, Ahmad, Anthony, Kambuala, Forson and Keeper Heaton. For Liverpool, it's Gakpo, Elliott, Simikas and Gravenberg. Clark, McConnell, Dans, Bradley and Keeper Adrian. Jim, thanks very much. And also on commentary this afternoon is the former Ireland captain, Andy Townsend. Andy, what's a place to be on a Sunday afternoon, FA Cup quarterfinal weekend, and what a match in store. What a privilege to be here. Well, it certainly is, eight. And I tell you, I'm thankful we're here. Yesterday, I was listening to Jim in the car doing the, doing the Wolves Coventry game, and I listened to Joe and, and, and Scott today, and I nearly put my car in a ditch about four times because <laughs> it was so exciting listening to it. I tell we're glad you, you didn't. Exactly. So I'm delighted to be here and I am so looking forward to what promises to be a thumping afternoon. Uh, we'll talk about the team news in a second, but let's go to West Ham. Goal there, Ian Abrahams. West Ham 2, Aston Villa 0. Mikel Antonio has his and West Ham's second. Jared Bowen's corners all day have been a real problem for Villa. This one was uh, swung in viciously. There were three that went for it, including uh, Kurt Zuma, who was right in front of Antonio. I don't think Antonio even knows what's happened. It's just basically hit him two yards out and gone into an empty net. It's West Ham 2, Aston Villa 0. Um, Andy Townsend on the team news. Dallow at left back. Mo Salah's got a great record 
against Manchester United. It's a club record 12 in 13 appearances. More goals for Liverpool against United than any other team. That could be a key area today. Well, it could be. I think what Ten Hag has done is just got as much pace in the back line as he possibly can. Two reasons for that, I think. that We saw in the Manchester derby, United scored early with Rashford and then they kind of sat off the game and allowed City to do what they do. I think at Old Trafford, they cannot afford to do that today. I think they've got to be up closer to the halfway line when they can. They've got to be forcing pressing mistakes out of Liverpool, pinching the ball 30 odd yards from their goal. In order to do that, you need as much pace in that back line as you can. So Lindelof and Varane and Wan-Bissaka and Dallo are probably as quick as United have got, Aidan. I think that's why they're deployed. Rasmus Hoyland is back. If fully fits, seven goals in six. He's massive for United. He is. He's now started to look, and look, very early days for him, but he's actually started to look like a striker that United can really do something with. Often we see we see people coming into the team and, and they show flashes, they show, show signs. I think that for Rasmus Hoyland, he's given us enough lately to indicate that I think he can be a proper forward. Well, we told you that West Ham were 2-0 up. Are they Ian Abrahams? No, West Ham won Villa nil. Our friend VAR has disallowed it for offside, for not offside, for handball against Mikel Antonio. I told you he didn't know much about it. It came through the goalkeeper and a couple of players. It hit him on the hand before going into VAR. Has disallowed it. Two disallowed goals for West Ham this afternoon, but they still lead. West Ham won Villa nil. Uh, well, let's hear from the managers here at Old Trafford. Eric Ten Hag has been speaking to the media about whether his side or Liverpool are favourite for today's game? Oh, it's a difficult one because um, I, I never think about this. Who's favourite? It starts on zero. Make sure uh, we are ready and I don't think about the uh, opposition. I respect them. I respect every opposition but it's about uh, make it our game and it's about this uh, where we know where the strengths are uh, but also where the weaknesses are and it's about that our team is in the best. It's about this. And what about Jurgen Klopp? He was asked if he looks forward to games of this magnitude. Ask me after the game if I enjoyed it. Um, but before the game, it's just work. And um, we we try to be as good prepared as summer possible. And United had obviously a full week to prepare. Eric Ten Hag is, is, a, is a really good, really good manager. He will prepare them. He knows exactly how we play. So there will be, we'll face there some challenges we don't know in the moment. As much as it is as possible, I enjoy it. Now, Eric Ten Hag also said yesterday, Andy Townsend, that, uh, I'll give you the quote actually, he said, we have to save the season together. We know we have to catch up in the Premier League. Now we have an opportunity to win silverware. Only opportunity is the cup, and we are only three wins away. Those, it sounds, it's probably right, but it sounds like a massive statement. We have to save the season together. Yeah, I think what he's trying to do, he's trying to fill his players with as much positivity as he can. I really will be disappointed today, probably more than any other game I've been here in this period for United, where they're still trying to navigate their way back towards the best places. I've been, I'd be really disappointed today, Aid, if I don't see an ultra-positive Manchester United performance. Can't guarantee the result against a good, a good side. You never can. And they're up against a very good team. But if this United team aren't on the front foot, if this United team aren't brave trying to intercept, trying to then play through people, running beyond Liverpool's back line, if they're not doing that, then I think Ten Hag's going to get a lot of stick after this game. I do. I think this is a quite a crucial one, not only for his team in the season, but for him too. Well, if Liverpool are to win, basically Man United really have to make them work for that victory. Let's see what happens. Let's get the latest odds for it from Betfair. Odds update on Talk Sport with Betfair. We're paying out winning bets at 90 minutes with 90 minute payout. Applies to match odds, 90 markets or markets with a 90 icon. Sportsbook exclusive. T's and C's apply. 18 plus. BeGambleAware.org. And we welcome Sam Rossbottom to the show. And Sam, what are the pre-match shots? Man United against Liverpool at a noisy old Trafford. Yeah, look who's the noisy neighbours now, eh? Uh, looking at those match odds, 90 markets. Manchester United, 11 to 4 currently as things stand. They did beat Liverpool at Old Trafford last time out, a 2 1 win in the Premier League. And no team has eliminated Liverpool from the FA Cup more than Manchester United. But it is a big task today. Liverpool as short as 8 to 13 to win in 90 minutes they have progressed from 17 of their last 18 FA Cup quarter 
quarter-final ties. The draw in this one currently five to two. And uh, looking at some of the uh, the players that you've called out there, Rasmus Hoyland, like you said, seven goals in his last six. He's seven to one to score first today or 9-5 to five to score any time. Unsurprising, when we look at the goal scorer's market, the favourite, none other than Mo Salah. He's, uh, he's back. Liverpool fans will be hoping that he is fully fit. And he's right up there as the favourite to score first at 9-2 to two and 10-11 to 11 to score any time. And Sam, each week we're placing a bet on the Betfair Sportsbook with all the winnings going to the Bobby Moore fundraising funds for life-saving bowel cancer research. And today we're placing a bet builder on Manchester United against Liverpool, of course. Both teams to score over two and a half goals, over nine and a half corners. Yeah, I like this one. I like what you're going for here. It's going to be tricky to, to pick a winner in a game with this magnitude. So we're dipping into the, some of those other markets that we can do with a bet builder. Over two and a half goals, over 9.5 corners in the game and both teams to score. We've backed that at around four to five. So our £50 charity stake will return £89, which will take us very, very close to £2,000 raised for the season so far. So fingers crossed, Adrian, we can land our bet builder. So Sam, thank you very much. That's all. Thanks to Betfair. 18 plus B, gambleaware.org. Odds update on Talk Sport with Betfair. We're paying out winning bets at 90 minutes with 90 minute payout. Applies to match odds, 90 market or markets with a 90 icon. Sportsbook exclusive. T's and C's apply. 18 plus B, gambleaware.org. Just a couple of miles away in League Two. Salford take a 2-0 lead against Morecambe. Callum Hendry with the second uh, goal for Carl Robinson's side. But we're here at Old Trafford as the Man United uh, players, uh, some of them still out there. The Liverpool players have uh, left the field after their warm-up and we prepare for kick-off. 15 minutes to go until we get underway. It's the FA Cup quarterfinals on Talk Sport with Carling, the official beer partner of the Emirates FA Cup. 18 plus, please drink responsibly. Kick-off, Man United, Liverpool, FA Cup quarterfinal. Coming up next... The Emirates FA Cup live on TalkSport with Carling, the official beer partner of the Emirates FA Cup and Adobe Women's FA Cup. 18 plus, please drink responsibly. Here they are, the racing lovers of the UK, phone in hand, ready to play the Coral Reward Shaker. Look at them shake. We've got the regulars at the race course shaking their phone with confidence. And look, they've won a free bet. Parents on a day out just happy to be here. They've got it too. An odds booster for them. Lovely stuff. Everyone's a winner. Play Coral's free reward shaker to win guaranteed daily rewards and offers. Coral, we're here for it. 18 plus UK. Max one reward or offer per player per day. Reward restrictions, requirements and T's and C's apply. Take time to think. Polly cinched it. Yes! The Pollock family have cinched it. <laughs> yep, the nation have cinched it by buying their perfect car online. With helpful financing options and an instant online part exchange price for your old car. Plus a guarantee for the price quoted. So with financing options, an instant online valuation and a guaranteed part exchange price, join the nation in absolutely cinching it. Search cinch and buy your next car today. Guarantee subject to car's accurate description. T's and C's apply. You know how the best ideas come in the shower? Well, here's one for you. Switching to an energy-efficient shower head is more efficient because it saves water and could save you up to £40 a year on energy bills. And that's worth singing about. Shower, save, repeat. It all adds up. Find more energy saving tips at gov.uk forward slash save energy. Ah, the sound of. There's nothing more satisfying than a garden spring clean with Karcher. Whether it's decking, patios, fences, or driveways, dirt, dust, and moss don't stand a chance against Karcher's pressure washers. This is what Karcher clean feels like. Bring back the wow. Your call is really important to us. <sighs> Waiting. Frustrating, isn't it? Especially when you've got plans. Whether you're thinking of revamping your home or looking for ways to move your business forward, we'll help you get there with finance that's right for you. So don't let your plans get stuck on hold. Join over a million customers who trust us to deliver the right finance solutions to get them moving. Search navuna.co.uk and get there sooner with Novuna. We're Bet MGM Sports and Casino. 
We know things aren't always golden. That's why we offer you the tools to keep your place safe. Set timeouts to always ensure you take a break when you feel like you need it. Set reality checks so you know exactly how long you've been playing. And set deposit limits to help control what you spend. Stay golden with BetMGM. Play responsibly. 18 plus. Tuesday night. The Women's Champions League live on TalkSport 2. High intensity, expressive football. What a strike! Ajax versus Chelsea. Coverage from 5.30. Kickoff, 5.45. It's a sensational goal! Night goals come Tuesday night on TalkSport 2. There's nothing like Manchester United against Liverpool. I am not worried about Liverpool. Um, we have to think about ourselves. And Manchester United have won it. Ten injured, ten hard under pressure, tenacious and victorious. And they might still be able to get some silverware out of the wreckage of a disappointing season. An era can come to an end. As Klopp's Liverpool reign starts to come to an end. The trophy hunt won't stop for Klopp. They are a relentless winning machine. And Mo Salah scores for Liverpool! Rashford's got into the penalty area. He's taken it wide and smashed it into the goal. It's 2-0 to Manchester United. The FA Cup, the oldest and the best domestic cup competition anywhere around the world. Another defining night at Old Trafford. Is on the card. Well, United Liverpool here at Old Trafford, 10 minutes away, the only national radio station with commentary of the final quarter final here at Old Trafford is, of course, the world's biggest sports radio station, Talk Sport. And what a noise here at Old Trafford as well. These United fans know that the last time Liverpool were here, they beat them in the Premier League. Feels like a long, long time ago with a lot of water under the bridge since then it is the FA Cup quarterfinals on Talk Sport with Carling the official beer partner of the Emirates FA Cup 18 plus please drink responsibly let's look back on a game we brought you earlier Chelsea 4 Leicester 2 in the FA Cup and the victorious Blues boss Maurizio Pochettino has been speaking with Talk Sports Joe Shen. Just on Raheem, you, you said he's a very experienced player. Yes. Do, do you put an arm around him? Do you have a chat with him after something like that, or do you let him get no, on with it? Have time, yes, I have a, I had a chat. Uh, we have a chat all together also, and and of course have all my support, and and uh, we are going to be all there to try to to help. Of course, after football, it's about to perform and and to make the. Uh, the choice, but I think he and all the team deserve a big support because he's our player, because he he is fighting for our badge, our club, and and of course I am the coach and the manager. I decide, and I have uh, I need to take my decision. And I'm going to take my decision always based in in the performance, and and of course, uh, but the support is really important, and and uh, of course we are going to you know for sure he is going to. Uh, leaves and, and and be again the, the player that we expect. And one very last one. Your team, your young team, showed they have quality today. They also showed they had character, didn't they, today? No, yes, quality and character. But through games and through sometimes mistakes or realise in the way that we need to compete is, is about how we need to build our run. But I think, uh, yes, happy today. I think the performance was good. Overall, I think we deserve we created too many chances and I think the first half should three, four, five nil. You know, second also when we concede was the emotional impact. But I think happy to go to Wembley. Well, Andy Townsend, a former Chelsea captain. A quick word on Raheem Sterling and the performance today and the booing from the Chelsea fans. Yeah, look, he won't like that. I mean, no, no, who does? Um, however, you know, look, the simple facts are that Raheem is not, never has been, the most technical footballer. He, he hasn't. When confidence is down, when confidence is brittle, even for experienced players, then that highlights that problem even more for me. Why on earth do you let him go anywhere near a penalty? I don't know. When you've got other far more accomplished ball strikers in the team than him, um, and then sometimes one of those days where harder you try to dig yourself out of, a, of an issue you just make it worse with that free kick uh, late on in the game um, so look it's something that he's old enough and experienced enough to get on with nobody likes it Abe, but I think the Chelsea faithful have got to start to understand that Raheem isn't one of those technical footballers that's, that's blessed with the greatest close control and the greatest finishing ability he's never has been really 
he's just, he played in an unbelievable City team and he more than played his part in that and was very successful. But they've got a very different player at the moment, Chelsea. They've got one, as I say, that's down on confidence. And it don't matter how old you are, when that confidence level starts to go a bit, you suffer. And does booing affect you very quickly? Well, booing hurts. It does. It stings. There's no denying that. Um, you don't. You can't let it show. You've got to keep going. Things will turn for him, and I'm sure he'll get himself a few goals over the coming weeks, and he'll feel better about himself. But uh, but it's not easy. Eh? Not easy to deal with, but you, it's part and parcel of, of life as a player. Uh, let me remind you, Sterling, he didn't have a great game at all. Nobody could pretend otherwise, but he did have an assist for Cole Palmer's goal in the first half. Let's uh, check in at our other games that are ongoing right now. First of all, in the Premier League at the London Stadium. Talk Sports, Ian Abrams. 64 gone. West Ham 1, Villa 0. Villa on the attack at the moment. The goal scored by Mikel Antonio in the first half. Kudus in the first half and Antonio in the second of that goal disallowed. Unai Emery's already made four changes aid. 64 gone. West Ham 1, Villa 0. Um, what's happening in the first 20 minutes or so at Ellen Road? Natalie Pike. It's Leeds 0, Millwall 0, but it's been all Leeds in the opening 23 minutes here. Shots for Bamford, Nonto and Somerville. It's turning into a bit of a feisty game already. We just had the first bookings for Nonto and Cooper. They were pushing and shoving each other and honestly lying on top of each other on the floor. It's Leeds nil, Millwall nil. Sounds like a classic, doesn't it? An own goal has uh, put Morecambe back into the game on going in League 2 in this vicinity. Salford 2, Morecambe 1, still Spurs 1, Leicester nil. An hour gone in the Women's Super League where earlier Man City were 4-1 winners at Brighton to go joint top of the WSL. Chelsea still leads the way on goal difference. What a tight finish that is going to be. And next Saturday, it's City United in the WSL at the Etihad. And we've got that live on TalkSport 2. It's the FA Cup quarterfinals this weekend. And we've already had three of them. We've saved the biggest to last. And it's live and exclusive and only on Talk Sport and the noise inside Old Trafford phenomenal. Away to my right, there's more away fans than normal because of the FA Cup allocation and Liverpool fans are making themselves heard, no doubt about that. The two teams are in the tunnel. Bruno Fernandes heading the line for Manchester United, taking a little drink. He looks cool and calm. Anana behind him. Virgil van Dijk, the Liverpool skipper, looks very relaxed, claps his hands, encouraging his teammates as they make the walk out onto this turf for what is an English classic, Manchester United against Liverpool. Now, in the history of talk sport, we've always respected the FA Cup, and this weekend has shown why we still do that. Sure, the holders cruise through, but Coventry, two goals in injury time, and a six-goal thriller at Chelsea that had literally everything. What about this one? Top filling, live and exclusive, and only on TalkSport. Man United take on Liverpool. It's on TalkSport with former Ireland captain Andy Townsend, alongside your commentator, Jim Prowper. Thank you, Adrian, and a very good afternoon to you. And yes, this is the one. A heavyweight encounter, whatever the context. England's most decorated teams always heated adversaries. This rivalry born of history and geography and invariably shaped by current affairs. The second year of Manchester United's Eric Ten Hag rebuild has seen retrograde steps. It's the last chance of silverware in a campaign. For the last 10 league games that we can serve with UEFA coefficients and a hope for fifth place in stark contrast to their neighbours from the other end of the East Langs Row who bagged one trophy and I another three to provide Jurgen Klopp with the perfect send-off. His long out leader's aim could encompass another 18 games, but this local rivalry being what it is, even taking one leg out of that potential quadruple, would exaggerate United's delight at their own progression. Well, these are the two teams. Let's firstly look, Andy, at Manchester United, an honorary goal. Wan-Bissaka back at right back, Lindelof back in the middle, alongside Varane and Dalla moves to the left. The Tomini and Mainu, Garnacho, Fernandes and Rashford. And Hoyland back in the nick of time. Yeah, I think that's a pretty useful team, Jim, I do. I think that's one that Eric Ten Hag will feel should be ultra competitive today lots of pace in the right areas there's there's presence there's height from defending set plays and attacking them and of course you've got that little unpredictable nature of someone like Rashford Garnacho and Rasmus Hoyland up front is Casemiro a significant loss I 
yeah, Casemiro's experience is a loss. He's not the quickest across the ground when they go out of possession, United, and they do go out of possession a fair bit these days. So, look, McTominay certainly won't be short in that respect in tracking people like Chopper's Liar, Stride for Stride. He'll be able to do that. So I think McTominay and Kobe Minor will relish the prospect today of being together in there and showing what they can do. Liverpool have got Kelleher in goal, Gomez, Kranzer, Van Dijk and Robertson, McAllister, Endo and Soboslai, Salah, who's got an extraordinary record in this fixture, 12 in 13 games and seven in his last five here against Manchester United. Diaz plays the other side of the left and Darwin Nunez through the middle. Yeah, and again, the Liverpool team, I think they've coped really well with some of the injuries they've had. And I love the way they prepared to introduce and back some of the younger players, really give them game time. We've seen Connor Bradley, terrific. Jarrell Kwanzaa recently as well has come in into a big game situation and done really well. So again, Liverpool have, they have that feeling at the moment that they are marching on to something special, that this season is going to develop into something very unique indeed. This is the sort of place you've got to come and to keep that going. Manchester United in their red shirts and white shorts will kick from left to right in this first half. They'll defend the strip for them. And Liverpool in their white and green quartered away kit with black shorts have been in a huddle and break and make their way into their respective positions. Well, the very recent history of this fixture points all one way. But you've got to go back to 1921 for the last time Liverpool beat Manchester United in a cup tie here at Old Trafford. Continued pressure of quadruples on the line as they try and rectify that. Whilst United chase the win that could yet see them salvage something from the season. Yeah, just one thing to know immediately as we just get underway. Diogo Dallo is in the right back position. Aaron Wan Bissaka as a left back up against Mo Salah. That'll be interesting. So Ten Hag obviously wanting to make sure that he's got as much pace down that side to cope with the fact that when Liverpool look to change it and go big, they've got someone who can go stride for stride with Mo Salah. So Dallo, as a result of that, playing it right back and he's in possession now and he clips it through the midfield. But Bruno Fernandes heads it on. Hoyland back for Fernandes. Another high ball hoisted forward. Van Dijk keeping a weather eye on it. Let's it bounce inside the penalty area. Heads it over the on-rushing Garnacho and Robertson will be able to clear. Lindelof back in his favoured centre-half position, steers it away from Darwin Nunez, and then Maynou brings it through the midfield quite beautifully for Manchester United. Out it goes from him to Rashford. wan on the overlap. Rashford, left-hand side of the penalty area, getting towards the byline, checking, playing it back for Aaron wan again. And his first game for a couple of months. Fernandez for Maynou, getting the return ball. Kobe Maynou, wan on the oh. slide should have let it run for McTominay who would have been able to have a shot from a much better position now Liverpool break quickly and the Nana decides that he's going to have to come out and deal with that and he does so very effectively acts a sweeper keeper actually letting the ball run out of play down by his own corner flag it is a United throw but a side of goal inside the opening couple of minutes for Eric Ten Hag's men at 0-0 yeah electric atmosphere and electric pace at the start of this game Terrific football from United down there, left involving Rashford, one bissaka And just as you mentioned, Jim, if they'd have just let that ball roll through to Scott McTominay, he would have had a shot from maybe eight or nine yards out straight at Quibin Kelleher. Unfortunately, Aaron one bissaka just got a little bit excited and tried to get a touch himself, and the move broke down. With that, the ball transferred immediately from the Liverpool goalie where Luis Diaz has a one-on-one, -on -one. Andre Anana comes right out of his goal to deal with it. So both teams, foot to the floor, as you would expect. High intensity on the field, high decibels off it. Very intense atmosphere here with 9,000 travelling Liverpudlians away to our right-hand side. That side have got a free kick as McTominay barrels into Luis Diaz. And just going back to that United back four... It's only the second time this season that wan has played at left-back. He did so in the 2-2 draw here against Tottenham where Dallow played on the right and he himself played on the left and they are that way round again today with Gerald Quanza bringing the ball forward for Liverpool. Played out towards Joe Gomez who's been in fine form which has earned him a, an international recall after more than three years. Van Dijk's put under pressure inside his own area. Gets it away from Garnacho. 
But in finding Robinson on the left-hand touchline, Robinson very quickly ran out of room and it's got out for a throw that will be taken by United, who are playing with a really good intensity inside yeah. the opening four And minutes. I think that's so important today, I really do, to keep the crowd, keep everyone with them. Look, you're not going to beat a Liverpool team without having to suffer a bit of risk now and again. You've got to be prepared to do that. Garnacho drilling it low across the edge of the penalty area and a fine save from Kelleher. Rashford came onto it, hit it right, put it on the edge of the penalty area, nobody picking him up. Keller dived away to his left-hand side. Yeah, hit that really well. Sorry, Jim, he hit that so well, Marcus Rashford. And that arrived to him on the edge of the 18-yard box, on his right foot, wraps his foot around, it goes for the far post. Great stop from Keller. Has scored six goals in his last seven games against Liverpool here, including one against the Jurgen Klopp's men in the... Last FA Cup meeting between the two, which was back in 2021. Well, that was a thrilling game that United won by three goals to two that day. So still nil-nil in the early stages, but the deadlock's been broken in. Ellen Road is Natalie Pye. It's Leeds United 1, Millwall 0, and it's a goal for Willie Nonto. He scored last week, he scored today 20 yards out, a beautiful left-footed strike. Leeds 1, Millwall 0. Eighth of the season as uh, Leeds look to go back into the top two. Extend their unbeaten league run to 13 against inform Millwall. West Ham still leading Villa 1 0. Salford 2 Morgan 1 in League 2. Uh, earlier, Chelsea 2 up, blew that lead, but ended up winning 4 2 against Leicester in the FA Cup. Ananas, first piece of work, comes after an effort from Sobberschlei on the outside of the penalty area, just working the ball onto his left foot. Just a clipped shot that was easily saved by the Cameroonian international. Nil-nil, but a really bright start. An excellent tempo shown by both sides in the opening five minutes. As you would expect. I think it, anything less than that would be a surprise today. It's a, it's a great atmosphere inside Old Trafford today. It really is. And it's a big game for obvious reasons for the home team. And certainly for the away team, they, as I mentioned, they feel they could be moving towards something very, very special this season. So it's all to play for. Now Garnacho will chase Kelleher there first. Sliding out in his yellow towards the edge of the penalty area. Now they're quickly back on his feet to bowl the ball for for Andy Robertson, who's travelled towards the edge of the Manchester United box before his progress is curtailed. Maybe he's going to just be able to calmly bring it away. And... I thought he might have won a throw, though that took a nick off Robertson, it didn't. It's a, a Liverpool throw. <laughs> Ball drop at the feet of Alexis McAllister. And back from him to uh, Virgil van Dijk. And now he scored the winner in the League Cup final as Liverpool cemented the first leg of this potential quadruple. Got a really good record in this competition at this stage of it. They've won each of their last six FA Cup quarterfinals, which is a run that stretches back nearly 30 years to a game that they lost at Anfield home to a Teddy Sheringham inspired Spurs back in 1995 but since then they've won every FA Cup quarter final they played in and on the front foot here is Sobberschlei looking for Nunes at the near post United with enough bodies back to be able to dig it away and then the McTominay's fouled inside his six yard box and it's a free kick that'll be taken by United nice sweeping move from Liverpool down their right side Sobberschlei going towards the byline Whips it right across the six-yard line. Darwin Nunez is there. He's waiting. He's in the right spot. Rafa Varane just gets across and shuts that door and sees that danger out. So Anana taking the free kick. Just punts it long through the middle where Kranzer then stumbled. But he'd done enough to put Rashford off. And that meant that a little hesitation from Marcus Rashford stopped him being able to get onto the loose ball with Kranzer's blushes spare. Ball out of play for a Liverpool throw over on the far touchline. Both sides in decent form. Liverpool seven wins in eight in all competitions, but United have won seven of the last nine. Liverpool bring the ball forward, Darwin Nunez. Maynus quickly won it back. Ball from him to Hoyland, who tried to lay it off with a feathered touch into the path of Bruno Fernandes, but he missed him. And it's out for a throw to Liverpool. Jim, I also want to see Bruno Fernandes in a big game like this step up and I think make the difference in those big moments. We know he can finish, we know he can score, but I think he needs to be at the top of his game today. Another ball inside the penalty oh! area. Volley back in and just wide. Wow. What a magnificent goal that would have been. 
Mo Salah coming onto it on the left-hand side of the penalty area and he drifted away, isolated himself against Lindelof and he caught it so sweetly. Goalkeeper beaten and he's dragged it about a foot wide of the far post. Let's get news of a goal at West Ham, Ian Abrahams. 12 to go, West Ham 1, Villa 1, the equaliser scored by Zanilolo off the bench. It was crazy down the right-hand side, it's been coming as well, Jim. West Ham 1, Villa 1. 1-1 one, one there, 3-1 to Salford. Uh, just up the road from here, Curtis Tilt has scored the latest in their game against Morecambe. As we heard a few moments ago, Leeds leading Millwall by a gold nil in the championship. This one, nil-nil, but Liverpool only a few inches away from being oh. one up. Beautiful strike from Mo Salah on the volley. Darwin Nunez, it was on the opposite side of the field. Ping one right across the 18 yard line. And now Diaz trying to get on the end of a Gomez cross. And United leaving themselves a man short at the back at times. Salah had two to deal with there. He did. was able to chest it down and get it away. But somehow the marking has gone askew at the back. United win a free kick in midfield and take it ultra quickly to get Rashford going down the left hand side of the penalty area may have been offside but the flag has stayed down he's still got it cleverly worked around the corner Carnacho good save Kelleher and put it in from close range by Scott McTominay first blood to Manchester United after a pulsating opening 10 minutes McTominay from 6 inches could not miss and United lead the old enemy by a goal to nil just moments after Salah came so close to the other end. Well, just listen to that. The noise around us is pulsating, it really is. Because United have got that all-important first goal. Marcus Rashford made a run initially. I thought he was offside. No doubt that's all being checked. Garnacho eventually gets in. He forces the save from Keller, who can only just pop it up in the air. And from literally within inside a yard, Scott McTominay just gets there before McAllister to just knock it into the back of the net. And that is a big, in the context of everything today, that's massive, absolutely huge that United should get in front. Yeah, it felt crucial from their perspective that they scored first. Haven't got a great record chasing games from behind. Liverpool, as has been very well documented, have. But United haven't, so you always felt that, perhaps with their confidence being more fragile than that of Liverpool's, that several extremely significant big hitting defeats have gone their way in this fixture over the last couple of years first goal was always likely to be significant Scott McTominay's provided it and it's 1-0 to Manchester United wan on the left hand side of the penalty area he's played it back for Bruno Fernandes United able to bring the ball forward and then lay it back for Kobe Mainu just backtracking in the midfield he's gone back for Varane Mainu gets it again turns away from Sobberschlei wan back inside Mainu still bringing it forward Hoyland trying to make something happen Dallow coming onto it it's got that Joe right footed effort brilliantly blocked by Robertson Town for a corner might have been two terrific play from United really positive such a different side when they when they really go for it when they're half-hearted when they're hesitant they don't look anything like teams of old in red but when this group of players are prepared to really go and at a rate or not as they have done they've just lifted it the last five minutes they look dangerous. They look like they can unsettle Liverpool. Bruno Fernandes comes across to take the corner. It's the first of the game on the United right. In front of the Liverpool support. Raises his right arm above his head. He's clipped it towards the penalty spot. Darwin Nunez volleys it away. And Dallo sends a skied effort way over the bar. And a play for a goal kick that Quadine Kelleher will take. You're listening to Manchester United against Liverpool in the FA Cup. It's live on TalkSport with Carling, the official beer partner of the Emirates FA Cup. 18 plus, please drink responsibly. And a very good morning to you as well if you're listening on Sirius XMFC across North America. Our coverage with you exclusively in the United States and Canada this morning. So welcome to you if you're 
up listening to this game where Manchester United have got off to a great start but both sides probably should have scored one more than they have it's 1-0 to Manchester United here's McTominay the goal scorer on the left hand side of the penalty here it's a clever little reverse ball in Rashford will be able to pick it up McAllister back there defending with him it's laid back Maynou Fernandes goes down play goes on Maynou with a great little turn trying to oh. thread it back to McTominay nearly got it back but a little bit of pinball I think it hit Endo and goes back for Kelleher he bowls it out and Soboschlai has now got almost the freedom of the midfield to bring it forward for Liverpool so stretched already at times Robertson gets it back and oh. flies just over the bar after a little one-two with Luis Diaz he barely got time to draw breath the game is being played at such a rate of knots no sooner have, a, have United attempted to have a shot on the edge of the Liverpool 18-yard line the visitors transfer the ball down the field Andy Robertson getting on the edge of the box rolls it to Luis Diaz to his left gets it back first time shot on his left foot he just gets under it a bit and clips it over the bar should have done better should have at least hit the target with that so Salah's come close Robertson's come close with Vanana probably beaten on each occasion McTominay scored at the other end and a last ditch challenge from Robertson and we've, we've only played 14 minutes you can make a case that it might be 2-2 yeah here's Fernandez. Right back towards the edge of his penalty area, Varane. Helped on then by Rashford. And Krantz has got all the time in the world to be able to mop up. But this is a Manchester United performance almost of old, Andy. Yeah. The, the way that they're playing, the way that they're approaching this game. Something that you don't see week in, week out. No, we don't. No, we don't. Unfortunately, particularly in games when we're expecting United to win. We don't see that enough. I don't think we see enough control in a game. We don't really see that structure that is very apparent in some of the best teams in our league. But on any given day, Manchester United, with the players they have, if they turn up and do it properly, they can win, no doubt. Now McTominay with another great contribution. Finds Garnacho in the midfield, who rode the challenge of Robertson, but was caught by McAllister. And he's going to be called over by referee John Brooks. Will be a free kick to Manchester United. And but nothing more than a, a word in the ear of the Argentinian midfielder. Good footwork from Garnacho. He's just trying to get it out of his feet, actually, and then he saw McAllister come in. Clever little back heel. McAllister commits to the challenge and gets a ticking off, but gets away with a card. He won't the next one. Breaking plays allowed Eric Ten Hag to just have a little word with Diogo Dallo. Bit of tactical fine tuning, and something that uh, he wants done differently from what he's seen so far. Bruno Fernandes will take this free kick for Manchester United, and apart from Manana, the other 20 players on the field are all ahead of him. Fernandes to take it in his yellow boots, swung inside the penalty area into space, but it was uh, an awkward bounce that spun it away from Lindelof, who was coming in at the far post, goes out for a goal kick that Quivine Kelleher will take. What do Liverpool need to change then on the strength of the opening 16 minutes to try and curtail this United possession? Yeah, they, well, they won't change, I don't think, anything at all. They will continue to play when they can. Van Dijk and Ponce will want to get up on the halfway line. Robertson will want to fly forward. Joe Gomez can be a little more reserved. He's not as effective in the, the, in the final third as Andy Robertson is. So... But they won't change anything. They'll continue to play their football. They'll take risks. They'll commit people up and beyond their forward line. And that's the way the Jurgen Klopp always goes about it. The game will have that end-to-end that -end feel at times, which sometimes when you're winning a match, from a United point of view, you don't want that. You don't want it where it's, where it's going from one end to the other and who's going to punch the hardest, who's going to, going to find a way through in that respect. You want to have a little bit more control, but Liverpool always having a go. And Salah's done really well to turn it through for Robertson here. High ball in from him was too high for Diaz. Sobislai can recycle it. Good check inside the penalty area. Gomez coming onto it. And still he waits for the first goal of his 238 game career. Now let's get an update. Late stages at West Ham, Moose. Couple to go. West Ham 1, Villa 1. Villa probing Jim for a winner. Now they have the equaliser from Zaninolo and they look like they could score again. West Ham 1, Villa 1. So one apiece there. 1 0 to Manchester United here. Liverpool this season have conceded the first goal 
in 16 games in all competitions. They've won nearly half of those. Yeah. Seven out of the 16. It's an extraordinary record. And if you just have a look at games against Premier League opposition, it's better than that because they've they've won five and only lost two of the games in which they've gone one nil down against Premier League sides this season in the league. So they know there's so much time yet. They won't be panicking. Gomez takes his throw. Headed away by McTominay. Cleared by Juan Bissaka. Going up for Bruno Fernandes. is uh, beaten in the air. Diaz can bring it down. And Callis will be able to bring the ball forward. Out to uh, Diaz again. Coming in off the left flank. Bottom left-hand corner of the penalty area when he just switches play to Robertson and gets an immediate return ball. Diaz just checks for a moment, then comes back. Alexis McAllister of Scottish extraction. Endo played through the midfield. Made him wise into a challenge, and the crowd appreciated that. And then Wan Bissaka did well to stretch out and intercept the ball intended for Salah. And Man United might be able to break quickly. Fernandez getting it forward for Rashford. Garnacho, the only other player that's up with him at the moment. Rashford's got a lot of work to do to be able to get into a position across it. He's crowded out of it. Although he's claimed a free kick, nothing given. It's a goal kick which will be taken by Kelleher for Liverpool. Yep, good play. By Gerald Kwanza there. As Rashford just skipped past the initial challenge from Joe Gomez. The young centre-half just stepped across and just allowed that one to roll out for a goal kick. But again, I like the fact that when that ball came to Marcus Rashford there, he wasn't favourite to go past two Liverpool players, but he tried to take them on. He just put his head down and looked to see if he could make something happen. And I think that's the mindset United have to continue to have. If there's a bit of space in front of you, five yards, get into it with the ball, travel with it, and draw those Liverpool players out towards you. Liverpool have a free kick on their the edge of their own penalty area. Jim Proudford and Andy Townsend talking through the action from a, a sunny Manchester this afternoon. Well, about two thirds of the pitch in shadow. Uh, the Liverpool fans looking into the sun away to our right hand side a high ball hoisted out towards the Liverpool right bypasses Salah and it goes out of play for a throw Maynou back for Varane now Victor Lindelof able to bring the ball forward for United who've lost four of the last six games Late against play. Liverpool McTominay to his left for Hoyland but it wasn't the best pass from the Manchester United goal scorer and Liverpool get a throw out of it when United should have had much more and uh, Hoyland and McTominay just have a, a little angry a discussion from distance about yeah. the rights and wrongs of that but it uh, is a Liverpool throw over on the far side really good ball from Marcus Rashford on the halfway line just turned it inside 15-20 yards and found Scott McTominay just in behind Liverpool's midfield and that's a good example of what I mentioned just now about McTominay had 10 yards he could have continued to travel with that ball it wasn't a really obvious pass with a, of, a, of any real merit so travel with it and then wait something might develop if there's room in front of you get into it it's a magnificent crossfield ball from Dallow brought down on the chest of Rashford on the Manchester United left four from him to wan -Bissaka. first time to Bruno Fernandes wan has continued his run Van Dijk saw him coming steps across and clears up Ball out for another United throw who will be able to get the body towards the edge of the penalty area. It's not just that Liverpool have got a winning record in this game in recent times, but in doing so, they've scored two fours, a five and a seven against Manchester United, all in the six meetings between the two since Liverpool were last here in that FA Cup tie three years ago. Uh, United have barely led in the matches between these two in recent times, but do today. And Fernandez gets a free kick over on the left hand touchline which will be the cue for Varane to make his way forward and let's get quick half time details for the championship game talk sports Natalie Pike it's Leeds United 1 Millwall nil, and temperatures have been rising here throughout the first half we've had four cards so far and Leeds feel they should have had a penalty Cooper who was already booked need Roden in the chest in the box knocking him over but the ref said no Willie Nonto's stunning left foot strike separates the teams Leeds United 1 Millwall nil. thank you Nat so uh, so far so good for Leeds and we're midway through the first half here where it's so far so good for Manchester United and what can they do from this free kick uh, Liverpool have got a line of six defending on the edge of the six and there are four red shirts quite close to them ready to attack that space he's gone for goal 
Oh, Kelleher had it covered. It's gone over the bar onto the roof of the net. It was dipping and it came in with such pace. Worth an attempt, but he couldn't get it right. Yeah. I think just if you're going to do that, no problem with Bruno feeling like he wants to whip that really hard, almost like a shot from a, a crossing position in the wide area. Just make sure you get those runners across the front of it because that can then make life awkward for the goalkeeper. Van Dijk getting it forward. Liverpool struggling to retain possession and have good passing moves in the United half of the field in the last five, six minutes or so. wan finds Dallow, who is ever-improving as a full-back who will push forward into his central midfield positions. United now will go back via Varane to Anana, who calmly takes a touch and then plays it out with his second to Victor Lindelof. That goes back for Anana again, and this time he takes a more direct route upfield, but just trying to clip it under the head of Scott McTominay. Flick on wasn't forthcoming. McAllister can find Wataru Endo. Endo towards the edge of the area. Nunes turning it around the corner for his return run, and it was cleared. And then McTominay very nearly got it over the top for Rashford on the counter attack, but not quite. Oh, Rashford was absolutely away and in the clear and not coming back had that pass have found him. Liverpool have it again with McAllister to Robertson back in Man United territory but trailing 1-0 with 25 minutes on the clock Jarrod Kwanza the biggest F FA Cup tie of his brief career so far getting the ball back on the edge of the centre circle played into the feet then of Soboschlai back for Kwanza again more than having to work it back to his goalkeeper Kelleher who will Allow Kwanzaa the opportunity to turn and play it out. Back for Kelleher, down towards Van Dijk. And there's been another late goal at West Ham, Ian Abrahams. West Ham 2, Aston Villa 1, five minutes into seven added on. Ball swung over a free kick by James Ward-Prowse. I think Mavra Panos maybe got the final touch. West Ham 2, Villa 1. A big result that for Manchester United, if it stays that way, as uh, they aim for fourth, fourth, fifth. Helped yesterday by Spurs. A surprise defeat, or the, the manner of it was a surprise. Their 3-0 loss at Fulham. And United six points away from the top five at the moment. And just over an hour away from an FA Cup semi-final. But they've got a corner to defend here, Liverpool's first of the game. Yeah, Darwin Nunez taking that ball in the box. Well marshaled by Victor Lindelof. Just looking to drop the shoulder, get it beyond him to whip something into the danger zone. Good defending from Lindelof. Corner Liverpool. Uh, in League 2, Salford have beaten Morecambe 3-1. It's only their fifth win in 25. It keeps them in the bottom five. Uh, but Morecambe missed the chance to go level on points with the playoff positions. And they stay 12. In comes the Liverpool corner, a left-footed away swinger, which is headed away by Varane. Brought down by Gomez, 25 yards outside the penalty area. Sobeschlei across the face of Gomez to McAllister. Gomez turning it forward. Helped on, but the flag is up. He's uh, just flipped on by Kwanza. Look at the Diaz and the assistant referee over on the uh, far touchline. Tim Wood put his flag up immediately. Free kick to Manchester United. 26 gone, and it's United 1. Liverpool nil on talk sport. Yeah, it's been a really good game so far. I've loved the, uh, the energy that both teams have applied so far. Atmosphere was always going to be electric, and that hasn't disappointed at all. United deserve their lead. Not a lot in the game as we speak. Liverpool without carving out that real unbelievable chance. Now Endo's lost it in the midfield and Garnacho will come in off the left flank and he rolls into his left for Hoyland who's miskicked it. Maybe caught in two minds whether to try and play Rashford in in the middle or go for goal and in the end he stumbled and sliced it and he goes behind for a goal kick. Yeah, that was a good chance and that's because Endo just got the ball pinched off him right on the halfway line and that's where United are dangerous with Rashford with the pace of him Hoyland and Garnacho. that's where they can really benefit if they turn that ball over if they can pinch it and then get out of that Liverpool back line quickly as they did there they could be in business Rasmus Hoyland in a good position on his left foot in a wide of the goal yeah it wasn't, wasn't going to be easy to score from there but slipped at the vital moment now that West Ham goal, incidentally, is still being checked for a possible handball. Here's Nunes on the edge of the penalty area, and his shot is blocked. And Mavropanos credited with the goal, but they are looking at it for a possible handball, so it could yet 
go back to being 1-1 there right at the end of stoppage time in that game Van Dijk playing it down for Andy Robertson here with 28 minutes gone and Manchester United leading Liverpool by a golden hill Kwanza to Gomez Gomez bringing it forward over the halfway line a little bit too straight and a little bit too long so Diaz couldn't get on the end of it Nala comes out and claims it Liverpool have scored in all but one of their last 49 games so they'll be more than confident of the fact that United will need two to beat them the only problem is the one time that they didn't score was the last time they played Manchester United in the 0-0 draw between the two sides at Anfield back in December Lindelof finding Varane now Varane playing it with uh, too much height not enough care over Rashford's head and out for a throw that'll be taken on the Liverpool right-hand side 1-0 yeah. to United yeah, just Rafa Varane there on the halfway line trying to just whip a 20-yard pass out to Marcus Rashford a little careless I think very important that United when they do have the ball but again they've got to keep those passes there's con them continuity passes make sure that they find the target and wait for that right moment to really find something devastating at the top of the field uh, still that goal is under review West Ham it's like the wow. the first Coventry goal yesterday at Wolves that they looked at for four and a half minutes for a potential handball by Ellis Sims uh, this VAR check has also been going on uh, at least four minutes it might be 2-1 to West Ham but it could be 1-1 one, one. we'll let you know as soon as the decision is made Kranz are playing the ball for it's a lovely turn by Joe Gomez still he goes towards the edge of the penalty area then he lays it back for McAllister McAllister to Robertson Robertson left hand side of the penalty area brilliant defensive header shot then comes in from Soboslai and Anala can dive to his left to claim it good play from Liverpool that Again, just finding the passes towards the edge of United's 18-yard line. Eventually comes out to Andy Robertson in the box, but in a wide position. He crosses it. Really good defensive header from Rafa Varane. Comes back to Schobberslai. Gets his foot over it nicely, but straight out on Arna. Now the goal has been disallowed. It is 1-1. We'll get details of the decision with the full-time whistle in a few moments' time as Alexis McAllister picks up the first yellow card it was the only player that's been spoken to so far by uh, referee Brooks and now he's been carded after another foul on McTominay yeah he can have no complaints Alexis McAllister there I mean it's a poor challenge he's nowhere near Scott McTominay just grabs him body checks him takes the yellow card not a good player to have on a yellow card someone like him I don't still don't think the role that he has here at Liverpool is one that suits him absolutely the best he's a very good footballer he gets on with it but We'll see how he fares in that position now for the rest of the game on a yellow card. Bruno Fernandes, right-footed with a in-swinging free kick. Kelleher can claim it comfortably. He takes a couple of steps back to catch the ball. And it's still Manchester United 1, Liverpool 0 still. West Ham 1, Villa 1 in the 12th minute of stoppage time now. The ball played for by Kwanza. Sobersheim's got between the lines. He's picked it up. He hasn't got another player from either side within 10 yards of him in the centre of midfield. It's played it forward towards Salah. Salah for Gomez to Endo to McAllister. McAllister working it forward. Taken on the half turn by Darwin Nunez. Salah tries to stab it in first time. It's hit Wambisaka and goes away and out of play for a Liverpool throw. It's not the first time, Jim, we've seen. As Nunez chests it down and Sobeschlei on the edge of the box lets it run. Garnacho tries to stop Robertson getting a shot in. It's worked instead towards Diaz. Diaz taking it on. Dallo with a challenge. A really well timed one. Goes out of play for a corner. Yeah, good work there. Diogo Dallo to deny Luis Diaz right on the byline. Just trying to cut the ball back. Liverpool corner, but just going to mention a lot of space. Kobe Mino and Scott McTominay, one of them. One of them has to be careful that if they go out of possession that they fill that gap in front of United's back four. Because a couple of times, Shoppers like picking the ball up there and he's got 15, 20 yards to run into unopposed. 1-0 United. Robertson with the corner. Uh, it's easily headed away by McTominay. And then McAllister will go all the way back for Kelleher. Kelleher actually racing outside of his penalty area. Sweeps up on the edge of the centre circle. Fall from him to Gomez. And he's just driven a ball through the penalty area, which bounces once and then rolls innocuously out of play for a goal kick that Andre Inanna will take. Yeah, Joe Gomez a couple of times now has tried that big switch from right back out to the left wing. 
and he's failed them both times. So again, just keep it simple. Keep rolling it around. 10, 15, 20 yard passes. Let Endo, let McAllister, let others perhaps try and find those forward players who are in better positions. Banana leaves the goal kick for a veranda tape around finding his goalkeeper and then Lindelof plays it forward. Goes out of play for a United throw. And the full-time whistle's now gone at West Ham, Moose. West Ham won, Aston Villa won. The Hammers led through Antonio in the first half. So the logo equalised late on for Villa. West Ham had three disallowed. The first half, Kudas. Second half, Antonio. And then late on, a goal by Mavropanos. Over. It came off the hand of both Suchek and Bowen. That took six minutes for VAR to have a look at. Ludicrous. West Ham won, Villa won. Uh, so 1-1, one, one, the full-time result there. And that means that Manchester United is six, four clear of West Ham. And eight behind Aston Villa. Wow, six minutes. Some check that. Was they looking for Amber or fingerprints there, Jim? What were they doing? <laughs> Forensic evidence by the sound of it. Uh, and some. Paul's got out of play for a throw, which will be taken by Aaron Wambisaka. That's a great line, Andy. How long have you been sitting on that? <laughs> Here's McTominay. Tomney coming through the centre circle, finding Dallow. Dallow out right back, sauntering into the midfield. Now he's clipped a beautiful ball back out to the Manchester United left. So Rashford's got it. Wambasaka on the overlap for him. Rashford coming inside to the bottom left hand corner of the area. Fernandez from distance, and comfortably saved by Kelleher, diving and catching a shot that might just have drifted wide anyway. And Kelleher getting it, bowling it out. Endo put under immediate pressure by Fernandez. Lays it back for Kwanzaa and then to Gomez and United again with an intensity about the press. Uh, wan Bissak has done brilliantly to read the ball to Salah and step forward and deny possession. Then oh. Maynou with sensational feet, finding Rashford. Rashford putting it on a play here for oh. McTominay who has smacked it straight at Kelleher. Either side of him and it's 2-0 to United. Fernandes then does well to win it back. They're the better side, Manchester United. And they worded down towards Garnacho. Garnacho inside the box. Left footed effort from him. Hits Van Dijk. And the United fans claim on the arm. It ends up in the hands of Kelleher. He gets it out quickly. And now Diaz, very quickly, is within 10 yards of the Liverpool of the United penalty area. Now he's in the box. And still he goes towards oh. the near post. And Anana tips that one away. And out for a throw. Sensational football from both teams. I mean, Scott McTominay should have got his second of the game. He really should have brilliant run from Copy Minor to find him and eventually his shot unopposed from about eight yards out right in the middle of the goal. Goalkeeper does well to save him. Within seconds, Luis Diaz travels 60, 70 yards with the ball to hit a shot towards Andre Anana at his near post at the United goal. He has to do really well to get both hands on, but again, that's kind of been typical of what happens here. Just as one team lands a blow, the other team are preparing one seconds later. Well, it was a dour nil-nil between the two sides when they last met, but this has been anything. But we've had 15 attempts inside the opening 35 minutes. Liverpool with nearly 60% of the possession. United with the majority of shots. They've certainly had the better attempts as well. And they have the lead, courtesy of... Scott McTominay's 10th minute goal, but he should have added to it moments ago. Endo's won it back here for Liverpool. Salah to Endo inside the area and into the bottom left-hand corner only for the celebrations to be curtailed by an offside flag. And for now, it remains 1-0, although VAR will be checking it. Well, certainly not the goal scorer. It must have been Mo Salah when he received the ball in the wide area. Lovely finish from Endo. Mo Salah in that on that right hand side position oh it's close but it's it looks like he's just off Mo Salah but it's very very close Victor Lindelof holding the line on the edge of the 18 yard box certainly the goal scorer nowhere near offside the ball is cut back but it's Mo Salah as he received that ball he's just coming back towards the edge of the box his body's leaning a little bit more of an angle than Victor Lindelof which leads me to think it might get chalked off this one, but it's close. It is close. And my gut feeling is in line with yours that he is marginally offside. The T-shirt line is what gets looked at. And I think that he's just lent in a little bit too far inside the penalty area. But it's being looked at now by 
VAR Tim Robinson and Chris Cavanagh and the fact that it's taking as long as it has suggests that it is close but Andy you're a very good judge offside is the decision yeah now that was a little careless from United because in their left back position they had the ball tried to be a little bit too intricate too clever Liverpool pinched it released Mo Salah cut back Endo slots it in the back of the net they got away with it United just because that defensive line to their credit got themselves up on the edge of that box as quick as they could Van Dijk heading the ball forward and then it's volleyed high over the top from Gomez and will be chased but chased in vain by Darwin Nunez as Anana comes out to claim it it's been a scintillating cup time it's been a brilliant it's weekend of quarter final oh, action just Jim amazing a wonderful game earlier today with Chelsea getting the job done by four goals to two against Leicester but the scoreline doesn't begin to tell the story of how the game toed and froed Coventry with a historic win at Wolves yesterday Man City through again Who's going to be joining them? Endo. Now Joe Gomez. Salah inside the penalty area. Left-footed clip. Hits Wan-Bissaka. Flags up again. Anana actually made a mess of a relatively routine save, but it is a free kick for offside. Should be taken by Manchester United inside the penalty area. A plenty of chance for you to react to a great weekend as well. Man United leading Liverpool 1-0 at the moment. After us, Alan Pardew and Faker others will bring you all the post-match reaction. We'll be bringing you live interviews with Eric Ten Hag and Jurgen Klopp. 03717223344 is the number that will get you through tomorrow morning as well. It's Jeff Stanley's birthday. Is it? What do you want for your birthday? I'll have a two o'clock alarm call, please, to get into work. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. Be looking forward to that. He's with Phil Thompson, his old mucker, tomorrow morning. We're getting the band great. back together here on Talksport. Uh, Jeff, alongside Phil, Talksport breakfast tomorrow morning from six, and you can tune in on our free app online at talksport.com. Or ask your smart speaker to play talk sport. Also, if you want something different on your way into work tomorrow, Chris Evans' breakfast show on uh, Virgin is thoroughly recommended. The ball in from Robertson. Darwin Nunez, back for Robertson, heavy touch from him. United can bring it away. Garnacho with a touch for McTominay. McTominay calmly rolling it down the line for Rasmus Hoyland, who we haven't seen too much of, but he's just breezed away from Endo there. And Hoyland will take it on. Level the edge of the Liverpool penalty area. An appreciative round of applause as he lays it off for Garnacho. He takes the aerial route out to the Manchester United left-hand side for Rashford. Rashford's ball in. Fernandez the furthest forward. Quanza heads it away from him. And then Rashford climbing. Did well to beat Salah in the air, but all he's been able to do is head it out of play for a goal kick that'll be taken by Quivine Kelleher. We've got four minutes to go to half-time. It has raced by. Yeah, it has. It's been really good. And it's been a very positive Manchester United performance. Look, we're all very quick to criticise this United team when they don't do it, when they turn up and it's flat and it's dull and it's not interesting. Well, they've got it right so far. We're 41 minutes approximately into this game. And right from the get-go, they've been positive. They've had this mindset of getting people in the box, looking forward, looking to wrap it into the striker's feet, create chances. Have done it very well. Liverpool, in typical fashion, have responded and have had good situations of their own. It's a proper cup tie. Listen, even though United have, have got the lead, very little to choose between the two. McAllister playing it forward for Liverpool. Uh, Garnacho is uh, Banks put a defensive shift in, but he couldn't get it away from Soberschlei. And then Robertson for McAllister. Soberschlei again, toe poking it forward before Lindelof clears into space, but. United will be able to push out of their own penalty area, nothing more than that, because Liverpool will bring it forward with Kwanza. And now he finds Endo. Three minutes to go to half-time. And I mentioned, Jim, about being positive, not worrying about the last ten minutes of the game until you get to the last ten minutes of the game. But now, as we're approaching three minutes for half-time, now United have to make sure they're nice and narrow and compact and they get in half-time with this lead protected. And McTominay's conceded a throw. He thought the decision may well have gone the other way, but it, it's been taken by Liverpool. Back for Dominic Soboslai. Soboslai's got a great record in domestic cup competitions in his career. He's won a couple of Austrian and a couple of German cups. He was hoping for a, a hat-trick, having won the uh, Pokal in Germany in each of the last two seasons. He scored in a final in both of those countries as well. And he's got it again now, turns it back for Van Dijk. 
So he could have a fifth domestic cup winner's medal by the age of 23, which will be a, a decent record. He's got it now, trying to turn his Diaz. Play forward to Robertson. Robertson on the edge of the box with two minutes to go to half-time. Liverpool chasing a goal down. Robertson's ball in. And deflects out of play for a throw. About 10 yards from the corner flag. Right in front of the pitch side mobile camera. Andy Robertson uh, retrieving the ball. And Soboslai just uh, trying to extricate himself from the clutches of Garnacho. Throws the ball down towards Luis Diaz. Diaz will take it. And clips an awkward ball back for Endo. He did well to control it. And with his second touch, he finds Van Dijk. Liverpool ending the half. Spending much of the time inside Manchester United territory. And Quantz is inside the box. A good square ball from him. It's laid off for McAllister. An equaliser of rare quality. Alexis McAllister smacking it in at the near post. It's a brilliant finish. And Liverpool back on level terms before half-time. Well, I just mentioned about United making sure they get in at half-time with that goal intact and they've allowed Liverpool back in it's a great strike from Alexis McAllister I'm looking at the goalie whether he doesn't see it till late brilliant run from Gerald Kwanzaa into the box it goes into Darwin Nunez he lays it square to Alexis McAllister who fires one with it and it gets a deflection do you know what just seeing it there I wondered why perhaps it beat Andre Anana at the near post it was a heavy deflection Onana almost almost leaning to his right, ready to go right. It gets a deflection. He's now got to throw his body to the left. Can't do enough to stop it from going in. It didn't take much of a nick off Kobe Mainu, but it made all the difference. It did, yeah. All the difference. And Alexis McAllister, who lost against Manchester United in the semi-finals last year when he was a Brighton player, has got Liverpool back in this time. Really well taken goal, 1-1, one, one. and Ten Hag stands in front of us as we go to four minutes of added time. His arms folded across his chest, and he's got a look of disdain and anger on his face. You know that have missed good chances to have a bigger lead, but can they yet restore the advantage before the break? Fernandes with a free kick that's headed away by the retreating Darwin Nunez. Loose ball cleared out towards Aaron Wan-Bissaka. It was an awkward one, hooked in with his weaker left foot. Now, Kelleher must have come close to taking liberties with how he picked up the ball. It was right on the right-hand side of the box, but although there were complaints that the hands very quickly were whipped back in the box having claimed the ball, I don't think that was the case. Here's Gomez. Gomez trying to work it forward here for Liverpool. As they look for two quick goals at the end of this first half, Robertson's done well to win it back, threads it through towards Salah. Uh, United will be able to clear Dallow Wambisaka. Keep giving it away, Manchester United, panicking a little bit in possession. Someone needs to just put their foot on it, just restore a little bit of calm. And Horan trying to do exactly that. The old warhorse on the edge of the penalty area. The Liverpool fans in good voice as we approach half-time. Buoyed by that equalising goal, the 9,000 travelling contingent away to our right. Seen their side enjoy their probably their best five minutes of the game in the last five minutes. Fernandes put under pressure in the left-back area, robbed by Joe Gomez. First time ball in, headed away from Nunez, but it comes out for Diaz, back for Nunez. Nunez takes a touch, looks to the corner, good block, Salah's there, and Liverpool lead. They have turned it around quite magnificently with two goals in three minutes. Just as it looked as though Manchester United you know, were going to have a half-time lead. Now it's Liverpool in the box seat. And the quadruple quest is very much alive. Salah with his traditional annual goal at Old Trafford. Well, Bruno Fernandes is apoplectic with rage at the referee. He feels he was fouled by Joe Gomez. Personally, I don't. I don't think it was a foul. And from there, Liverpool in true... Liverpool style have somehow conjured up another very, very important goal. Darwin Nunez with the initial shot that Andre Anana athletically gets his left hand to. 
but it comes out to Mo Salah from six yards, takes a touch, drops it onto the right foot on the half volley, slams it in off the post. Bruno Fernandes is still complaining to the referee. It's being checked as we speak, of course. Well, it is being checked, and uh, John Brooks has told Fernandes to delay the restart. And he was absolutely adamant that he was fouled by Joe Gomez. So then the decision that the VAR will have is whether United had a chance to defensively reset and clear or whether that is still a protraction of the same phase of attacking yeah. play. Yeah, so you can understand this one's going to take a while. Bruno Fernandes was running back towards his own goal in a wide area. Joe Gomez pressing him all the way. It counts. Yeah. And he kind of went to the ground, I felt, a little too easy, Bruno Fernandes, as lots of players do nowadays. Crumble to the floor and then look to the ref. Where's the free kick? Well, he didn't give it. And, of course, from that point, Liverpool are in business. Couple of quick passes. Darwin Nunez has a shot. Well saved. Mo Salah with a tapping. His 12th goal in his last eight games against Manchester United. It's his 13th against them all told. It's Manchester United 1, Liverpool 2. Smell of sulphur very much in the air. The smoke oh. bombs have gone off away to our right-hand side. Yeah, uh, Bruno, deep. just to add insult to injury, got a yellow card for protesting. And Manchester United, who were three minutes away from getting in at half-time with the lead intact and with what would have been a very encouraging half-time team talk from Eric Ten Hag because it's been a great performance from them for 43 minutes yeah. but they've switched off and they now trail wow well, we've had this so much this weekend Jim you witnessed what commentary did yesterday incredible stuff at Molyneux Leicester today at the bridge credit to them coming from two back to ask a big question of Chelsea and now here Liverpool one down couple of minutes away and yet somehow they turned it around very quickly couple of goals it's the Liverpool fans you can hear in the background right now that are jubilant that are buoyant and United now have more to think about a lot more than they thought and that's half time Liverpool lead it by two goals to one after the first half in which Manchester United were ahead for 34 minutes Scott McTominay Putting the ball in from close range on the 10-minute mark. He had a great opportunity to make it two. Other opportunities were also passed up by those in red before McAllister on 44 and Salah in the second minute of first half stoppage time turned the game on its head in the blink of an eye. Half-time in a cup classic. Manchester United 1, Liverpool 2. Absolute classic as well. Listen to those Liverpool fans. Imagine being them. They are loving it because they really shouldn't be ahead. At half-time, Jurgen Klopp went sprinting down the touchline towards the tunnel in the corner. He knows he's got words to say, even though Liverpool are in front. Eric Ten Hag, he had a face like a smack backside after Liverpool got their second. He can't believe that Manchester United aren't winning this game, never mind losing the game. Extraordinary. Andy Townsend, how on earth did that just happen I mean United could even have been two maybe yes. they should have been two up could have been three up yep. they're losing two one they should have gone two up Scott McTominay has a, an unbelievable chance after a mesmerising run from Kobe Minu he just had the goalkeeper to beat everyone scrambling back pedalling on the line from about seven yards right in the middle of the goal just pick a spot and unfortunately he hits it straight into the traffic goalie saves it and incredible finish to the half from a Liverpool point of view brilliant from them the first goal from Alexis McAllister there's a slice of luck involved it takes a big deflection on Arna can't quite reach it I think had that not have taken that deflection he saves it but then United carelessly maybe naively allow Liverpool to really punish them and, and grab a lead incredible well Andy let me tell you what was happening as Mo Salah poked in to put Liverpool 2-1 up if you look at the halfway line as he's poking that second goal in lined up across the halfway line are Rashford Hoyland and Garnacho. they've left three up now whether that's the instruction or not I don't know but they weren't exactly streaking back there to try and help out in defence. Yeah. And after the goal goes in, you've got Bruno Fernandes, the captain, whining about a free kick that never was. 
they they played so well they got themselves in front and then they go back to old habits not tracking back yeah. whining when there's never a free kick in a million years what are they doing uh, well look I, do you know I see this a lot with the modern day footballer a lot when players crumble to the floor and, and almost expecting the whistle to go and I think that was a classic case of, of Bruno there under pressure from Joe Gomez we, running back towards his own goal but come on he had, the, he had the ball at his feet have control of the ball use your strength make sure you don't get easily out muscled and that's exactly what happened and from there Liverpool went and scored um, so, so look you know, from United's point of view very careless on the back of 40 plus minutes of really good work that's the disappointment now look we've seen Coventry do it yesterday we've seen Leicester today as I mentioned earlier come back United now have got to show that sort of level of guts character they've got enough they've created chances very good situations what they cannot afford to do is be careless, sloppy and sleep at the start of this second period and allow Liverpool to go too clear. Uh, I'm going to give a positive for Manchester United. People will talk about McTominay because he scored one, should have scored another one. Copy Mayno in midfield. Oh, oh, my goodness. What a player England have got on their hands here. And actually, Gareth Southgate, in his press conference this week, ahead of the two friendlies coming up, was talking specifically about Mayno this week. He said he's doing brilliantly for a young player. He's only had a handful of games. Ideally, he needs space to develop at his own speed. He was answering why maybe Mainu didn't get a call into the uh, senior squad. But I tell you what, he, he has proved today what a brilliant young midfielder he is. He's got a massive, massive future. I'm, I'm staggered he's not in the squad. Really? I'm Even am, though he's so young and not I'm at game time? I'm amazed he's not in the squad. Eight. I've, I've hardly seen the kid put a foot wrong since he's come into the team. And so what? He's only played so many games. Some, some players are ready to go in and stay in. He looks like one of those. Yeah, he might have a dip. But I, I, I would have most certainly, most certainly picked Copy Minor because he just looks the type of player that takes everything in his stride, that just seems to be able to find what's required. I think he'd have relished the prospect of being with the senior squad. Looks like he's going to have to wait a bit longer. Uh, you were a centre mid. What has he got then that makes him so well, good? Well, he has that composure really when he needs to, to and then he's also got, as we've seen a little bit more of him today, towards the top end of the but field where he's have a got goal. a bit about me. I mean, that mesmerising run that ended up with the top of shot when he should have scored was unbelievable. He walked past two or three or Liverpool not. players with great feet like ronaldo Let's listen to my stopovers and you name it involved. But uh, I like what I see. I like, as I said, he's got composure. He's physically strong enough. He looks like a man in a in a very in a a young man's body, plays like a an old, with, a, with an older head, and uh, I'm I'm surprised he's not made the full squad. Well, he's been brilliant, but he'll be sitting in the dressing room right now, Kobe Minu, wondering how on earth Manchester United are losing this game. But they are. They were one nil up and could have been two nil up, possibly should have been three nil up. Who knows? They're two one down. Liverpool turned it around just before half time. What a game we've got on our hands, live and exclusive, and only. Tentoff 
for uh, Leicester City. They were 2 0 down. Leicester came back to 2 2. Chelsea went up with two late goals, 4 2. Raheem. And that song was uh, made by me, um, as you can see. Um, I made it, so I made the song. Um, I've made the song um, and stuff like that. But anyway, guys, now let's go back to the commentary, um, and I will see you in a moment. Child place holidays available. Book now with just a sixty pounds deposit per person, and spread the cost with flexible monthly payments. Jet to holidays. Package holidays you can trust. Natural protected, subject to availability and conditions. A little story is easy to share. We can meet pink unicorns, pirates, and bears. We can even be pilots, fly to faraway places. The magic is waiting, so let's open the pages. A little story could make a big difference, but one in five children say they don't own a book. So we've provided over 160 million books since 2013, and we won't stop there. McDonald's. Change a little, change a lot. 19.2% of respondents from a survey of 6,896 children aged 5 to 8, National Literacy Trust, 2023. I'm Mike Brewer, and I don't know a lot about music. Garage, that's where I keep my car. But if you want to keep that in tune, visit mymotorworld.com. We've got the lot, everything you need, including car parts and oils from the biggest brands like Quinton Hazel, Brembo, Denso, Castrol and Carlu. Plus free delivery when you spend over 25 quid. Order now at mymotorworld.com and quote car 10 to receive a 10% discount on your first order. Mymotorworld.com Here in the UK, we sell amazing products and services the whole world wants. But Hawkshead Relish in Cumbria, demand is booming for our pickles and preserves in Canada and Australia. And at Luminance from Cambridge, our AI software is saving lawyers time in over 60 countries and 80 languages. So whether you're new to exporting or experienced, explore global growth for your business with free support from the UK government. Access information, training, events and expert advice to help you find new customers overseas. Visit great.gov.uk to get started. A man walks into a bar holding a cobblestone. He says to the bartender, one for me and one for the road. <clears throat> Jokes aside, if you're planning a block paving project this summer, then you need to get down to Juicen. From single blocks to project packs, traditional CBP or contemporary granite effects, there's something to suit every project, budget and taste. Plus, we've got all the accessories and tools you need to get the job done right. Want more stock, more value and inspiration? Search Juicen Landscaping. Juicen. Everything landscaping, all in one place. Terms and conditions apply. Here they are, the racing lovers of the UK, phone in hand, ready to play the Coral Reward Shaker. Look at them shake. We've got the regulars at the race course shaking their phone with confidence. And look, they've won a free bet. Parents on a day out just happy to be here. They've got it too. An odds booster for them. Lovely stuff. Everyone's a winner. Play Coral's free Reward Shaker to win guaranteed daily rewards and offers. Coral, we're here for it. 18 plus UK. Max one reward or offer per player per day. Reward restrictions, requirements and T's and C's apply. 
by. Take time to think. Talk Sport Drive. Tomorrow afternoon from four on Talk Sport. Hello, I'm Andy Goldstein. And I'm Darren Bent. Fast and furious football talk for full on fans. Under the bonnet, over the top, into the back of the net. A tower of sporting power in the afternoon. 100% nationwide coverage. Talk Sport Drive. Back tomorrow afternoon from four with Andy Goldstein and Darren Bent. The fastest football on the way home. We have a bit of that. So results today, Premier League, West Ham 1, Aston Villa 1, Dundee Rangers in Scotland was postponed in the Championship, 67 gone, Leeds 1, Millwall 0 in League 2, Salford 3, Morecambe 1 in the National League, Halifax 1, 2 nil at Oxford City and in the WSL, Liverpool 3, West Ham 1, Man United 2, Bristol City 0, Brighton 1, Man City 4, they go joint top just behind, Chelsea on goal, different City and Spurs 1, Leicester 0, all results today and in the FA Cup Chelsea 4 Leicester 2 they're into the semi-finals Chelsea again and here at Old Trafford Lyman exclusive on Talk Sport it's Man United 1 Liverpool 2 let's take a look at the halftime highlights in partnership with Carling the Emirates FA Cup halftime highlights on Talk Sport with Carling the official beer partner of the Emirates FA Cup and Adobe Women's FA Cup 18 plus please drink responsibly cleverly work around the corner Carnaccio good save Kelleher After pulsating opening 10 minutes, Salah to Endo inside the area and into the bottom left-hand corner only for the celebrations to be curtailed by an offside flag. It's laid off for McAllister. An equaliser of rare quality. Alexis McAllister smacking it in at the near post. It's a brilliant finish. Salah's there and Liverpool lead. They have turned it around quite magnificently and the quadruple quest is very much alive well that was all thanks to carling the emirates fa cup halftime highlights on talk sport with carling the official beer partner of the emirates fa cup and adobe women's fa cup 18 plus please drink responsibly Oh, don't forget, tomorrow morning on breakfast, 6am, Jeff Stelling's birthday is present, actually, was Hartlepool not losing yesterday, but it's also an early alarm call for the breakfast show tomorrow morning from 6am with his old mate Phil Thompson, a, an English champion seven times over, a European champion three times over with Liverpool, and a manager of the month winner with Liverpool as well. That's from 6am tomorrow morning Chris Evans on Virgin 6.30 if you fancy a bit of music I love a bit of Virgin 80s after uh, Chris Evans breakfast show uh, as well superb stuff what a game we've got here at Old Trafford live and exclusive and only on Talk Sport Manchester United 1 Liverpool 2 second half with Andy Townsend and Jim Proudfoot and a big roar for the Manchester United players as they came out for the second half of there's work to do Liverpool will get us underway they're kicking from left to right in their white and green corded shirts and right from the kickoff, the ball was laid back and Hoyland and Gomez just looked at each other and ran into each other. So I don't know whether that was a hangover from something in the first half. Uh, both walked away, there was no complaints. Uh, Hoyland and Gomez both trying to lay an early marker down in that battle. So here's Rashford, bringing it forward for Manchester United. Inside the area for Wan-Bissaka, they've got a corner. United in 25 seconds after the resumption. They're kicking from right to left in their red shirts and white shorts, attacking the Stratford end. And Liverpool in their change kit of white and green with black shorts. So Bruno Fernandes spots the ball down. They conceded twice in three minutes Late in the first half, United, can they score right at the beginning of the second? Garnacho actually going to come across to take it. So Fernandez offering himself for the short one. Rashford's unmarked near the corner of the penalty area. And it's played by Garnacho to Fernandez, to Rashford. Rashford taking it on inside the box and not really with a great degree of confidence. And Robertson was easily able to knock it away. And then when Bissaka will go back to his goalkeeper, Anana, as Diaz and Mainu collide. Here's Andy Townsend. Yeah. Well, the second half has started pretty much how the game got off and running. United are on the front foot asking a few questions. Liverpool now, of course, have something to protect themselves. So they'll be ultra dangerous through Mo Salah and Luis Diaz, who have both had their moments in the first half with that great running power that they have. Darwin Nunez didn't see quite so much of him. A couple of chances, obviously, involved very much in the Mo Salah goal when his initial shot was saved. But they're going to be really dangerous Liverpool now because United are 
are going to have to push. They're going to have to continue to be brave and courageous and offer people forward in and around Rasmus Hoyland. Uh, United lining up an honouring goal. Wambasaka, Lindel of Varane and Dallow. Dallow playing it right back and Wambasaka at left as Nunez brings it on inside the six yard box. Oh. He's very nearly squeezed it in the near post. It was a speculative shot along the byline and none of judged it. Yeah. He got his hand down to it, tipped it onto the outside of the post. He so nearly tipped it in. He certainly did. Darwin Nunez does great initially to roll Rafa Varane and then get towards the byline. He's literally about two foot from the byline. Everyone expecting a cutback, including an Anana, and he fires it towards the near. The goalie has to do well to save it. And he comes out and claims from the Salah cross after the corner. He actually made a double save because he flicked it with his hand up into his other hand and then it went wide. So he wasn't in control of that, Andre Anana. He was very lucky. It could have gone anywhere. Liverpool will bring it forward. They lead 2-1. They score next year, sense it might be all over. Here's Soboschlag trying to do exactly that. The shot that was blocked by the retreating Bruno Fernandes, who's put in a good defensive shift in, but he, he always has the air of being a disconsolate man. There's always the little wry shake of the head and the, the slump of the shoulders, not happy with the perceived weakness in an official or his teammates or something that's gone against him. Throw taken by Gomez, headed away by Varane. Back up in the air by Endo, and then cleared by McTominay. Drifted over his head, but Wan Bissaka volleys it forward on the stretch, and Jurgen Klopp is bemused as United get free possession. Garnacho with a little reverse ball, not the best. Van Dijk had covered a lot of ground from the left-hand side of the defensive unit to come across and get there ahead of Hoyland. Yeah, majestic defensive work there from Virgil Van Dijk. Just when it looked like United might have a little way to find a way through that Liverpool back line just use that huge frame and power just to glide across and just intercept perfectly and those are the thoughts of the former island captain Andy Townsend part of your commentary team here on Talk Sport you won't hear this game anywhere else on national radio with the only station that's brought you all four FA Cup quarterfinals over the course of the weekend the draw is scheduled for 15 minutes after the end of this game unless the game goes to extra time in which case it will follow the game, but it won't take quite as long as that for them to get it sorted. So it's not going to be that long before we know the identity of the two semi-finals in April. Liverpool bringing the ball for Soboschlai. To his right-hand side for Salah. And he just tried to take the weight off the ball inside the box for Nunez's run, but still too much on it. It went to uh, Anana first. Manchester City through. Chelsea through. Coventry through. And Liverpool at the moment will be joining them, but there's a long way to go. Rashford, left-hand side of the area. Ball in that got the Gomez at York a length and he could dig it away. And it goes out for a United throw on their left. A lot of room in the middle of the park in this game. There has been, actually, ever since we got going. I think there's been times where that area has been left unprotected because both teams are just seeing everything in front of them and trying to get into the box and make something happen. Someone needs to get the old wing mirrors on and just have a little look over each shoulder and make sure that they plug a gap or two. And now McTominay has lost it. He's had McAllister coming from the blind side to knock it away. And Diaz will bring it towards the edge of the penalty area and he slipped it to his right-hand side for Salah. Salah oh. trying to help it on and Varane on the stretch got there ahead of Solberschlein. But he couldn't clear it effectively. And Salah will pick it up again and he looks frustrated with himself that he didn't make more of that opportunity. But Liverpool have another opportunity in the next phase of play. Because the ball's back with Alexis McAllister to Endo. The former Brighton man picks it up again. The score of the first Liverpool goal this afternoon which came with a small, subtle but absolutely significant deflection from Kobe Maynard. Gomez coming forward, Juan Bissaka slides to get that one away and Bruno Fernandes will bring it forward and he's chipped it over the top of Garnacho's run, Kelleher coming out, heads out towards the far touchline, Robertson can't keep that in and it's a throw which will be taken by Manchester United on the right with Scott McTominay, McTominay doing well to win it back, Hoyland in the middle and Kelleher palms the cross down and saves at the second attempt, 2-1 to Liverpool here, 
Another goal at Ellen Road for Natalie Pike. Leeds United 2, Millwall 0 and second half substitute Dan James with his 12th league goal of the season. We are top of the league is being sung around Ellen Road. It's Leeds United 2, Millwall 0. Another great day for Leeds. 2-0, they lead Millwall. Darwin Nunez. Play through the midfield, but Cobby Main who cuts it out, Rashford. Fernandez making a run ahead of him. And he's played him in. And Fernandez has it left hand side of the box and he takes it on and goes right across the six-yard box. It evades Garnacho. It doesn't take a touch from either of the Liverpool defenders in there. And then Fernandez races like a petulant child towards the penalty spot and jumps up and down. As if to say, with some justification, how have we not got a corner for that? Yeah. Because it did take a deflection on its way through. It did. Gerald Kwanza gets a, an all-important touch. A great run from Bruno Fernandes in that left-sided channel. And then he kind of leans away from the ball to hit it with his right foot, looking to go far corner. Kwanza at full stretch just gets a toe on it. And United's man is absolutely right. It should have been a corner. Menu, Fernandez, McTominay. And now it comes forward towards Menu again, and he's inside the Liverpool box. Outside him is Garnacho, low driven ball. There's a massive shout for a handball there. Play goes on. It will be being looked at as we speak. McTominay trying to get the ball out from under his feet. Liverpool have won it back, and they'll be able to bring it away on the counter. Salah. Halfway inside the United half, great ball in for Darwin Nunez, who puts it much closer to the corner flag than the goal. And the booze are for the officials because of the perceived injustice of there not being a penalty to Manchester United, but as I mentioned, it will be being looked at by Tim Robinson. Yep, just having a little look at it again now on our monitors. No, it hits Andy Robinson on the arm, but not before it's hit him on the thigh, hit the ground and come up and then struck him on the arm, so... Absolutely no penalty and very close from Darwin Nunez. And the arm in a natural position anyway as Hoyland tries his luck at the other end. What a good cup tie this oh, is. That's so end to end this game, Jim. It really is. Well, the one here three years ago between these two was a fantastic game. This one's better than that. United won that 3-2. Liverpool lead this one 2-1. Endo's pulled it back for Alexis McAllister. Robertson coming forward now. Robertson on the bottom left-hand corner of the penalty area. It's just been fantastic as a as someone who snobbishly regards himself as a football purist. <laughs> uh, but it has been fantastic, just the renaissance of the yeah. FA Cup over the last few years. It's just, it's wonderful. Salah to Gomez. Gomez, oh, he's travelled a long way. Tip Varane and is cleared by Dallow. And then wan will chase after it and is to halfway before Mo Salah. wan threads it through the midfield again for Garnacho. Garnacho's got Hoyland to his left. Garnacho will turn and check. And he's claiming that he's being held up, physically held up there by Quanza. The referee says, no, you weren't. And Liverpool have got the ball back. And they're very quickly in Manchester United territory, only for Fernandes to come back and crucially put a foot in. And now McTominay can bring it forward. And he looks for Hoyland, but Van Dijk read it and gets it away. And Hoyland on his uh, return to the side after injury is uh, tiring shot comes in from distance from Sobosh line and Anana with a good starting position a long way off his line was able to narrow the angle and tip that away he goes out of play for a Liverpool corner yeah good start from Andre Anana I'm not sure whether it was going to sneak just inside his right hand post but as a goalkeeper he's absolutely right not to know just make sure you get it deal with it gets both hands on it palms it away for a corner the booze you can hear of uh, Garnacho felt that he was impeded high up the other end of the field and again crumpled to the floor didn't get the decision stay on your feet son stay on your feet when you've got the chance as a forward player when you're running at people stay on your feet United have got everybody back inside the penalty area and it's headed away the corner out to Soboschlai Soboschlai elects to just chip it back out towards the Liverpool left another cross forth coming it hits wan -Bissaka. And bounces to safety from Robertson as the rain begins to fall <laughs> in uh, with some severity as well. It's 2-1 to Liverpool. Just as if we needed to speed this game up a little bit more. We get a drop of rain on this surface now. So that ball's going to be zipping and flying about when players get tired. Just got to make sure 
you trust that first touch. There will be a lot of tired legs out here the last 10 minutes of this game because the pace has been absolutely unwavering, ferocious. 2-1 Liverpool lead it on TalkSport and Sirius XMFC in North America. Alexis McAllister, Salah, left-footed ball straight at Wan-Bissaka. Oh, no, then a rash challenge on the edge of the area. Bruno Fernandes has fouled Soberschlei. Soberschlei got a shot in and Fernandes tried to cl close it down. There was then a collision between the pair of them and Fernandes is vociferously protesting his innocence. And I'm more than happy to be corrected by the replay. Well, the ball's there to be won. I think he's every right and belief to feel that he can go for that and generally make first contact. I'm not sure if he did, just from that one angle we've just seen, not sure. The referee only gets that one moment at it to get it right. I'm going to another look at it now. Because what he would have seen is the contact and Sobislai going down and the fact that the ball Correct, went towards the Man United goal. Yes. Yeah. And that kind of removes any defence that McAllister, that, um, that Fernandes might think he has, whether he has or not. Yeah. It then makes it very easy for the referee to give the decision that he's given. It does indeed, Jim. And it's in a very good position from Liverpool. It's about, I'd say, five to six yards outside of the box. And they have Alexis McAllister, they've got Mo Salah, they've got Shabozla all around this. The wall is taking up its position. Endo has put himself on the end of that Manchester United wall. Andre Anana is now standing right by his post, just peering around that wall, trying to see where the ball is, trying to work out who's going to hit this. Can't see any of it. There's so many red shirts in front of him and, of course, customary. Liverpool put a couple of men of their own, three or four men, actually, of their own in the way. Goalie ain't seeing a lot of this one. He's just going to see it when it pops up over the top of that wall. I'll tell you who else is hoping he's not going to see much of it. That's Garnacho. He's lying down behind the wall, uh, but in a position that will allow the quartet to jump if necessary. You know, they've got two runners potentially to come out of the, 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 the uh, side of the wall, including Rashford. The free kick comes in and it dips onto the roof of the net from Alexis McAllister and out for a goal kick yeah weren't far away just didn't get quite the dip on it as he would have liked McAllister right shape it's a good opportunity that because again as I say the perfect distance sometimes when it's too close to the 18 yard line cannot really get it up over that wall and down under the bar but that was absolutely in prime position Van Dijk Pumping a high ball for for Nunez to chase. Gave you the United side at the beginning of the second half. I don't think it gave you the, the Liverpool team. Such was the, the ferocity of tempo right at the beginning of the second period. I'll do so in a moment. Sobislai gets it forward again. And Mainu is there. United can bring it clear from the edge of their own box. It's Kelleher in goal. And Gomez, Pansi, Van Dijk and Robertson. The canister endo, Sobislai, Salah, Nunez and Diaz. And wan -Bissaka. Has won a free kick and Joe Gomez is going to be booked. Yeah. Certainly neither player held back there. Joe, Joe Gomez comes flying in. He actually makes contact with the ball, you know, Joe Gomez. It's just that he's airborne when he makes that contact. He goes with the side of his foot. It's not studs up. Aaron Wambisaka felt the contact, hit the floor. Big roar goes up. United get the free kick. Joe Go Gomez gets a yellow card. I think he's slightly unlucky with that one. Six yellow of the season for Gomez. Third player to have his name taken today. It's in the book along with McAllister and Fernandez. Well, Wambasaka is OK after that heavy collision. Brings the ball forward, but presented it straight to the nearest Liverpool player, Endo, who has really blossomed over the course of this season. United win it back with Fernandez. That's... Come off the heels of Gomez and out for a throw that'll be taken on the United left by Wambisaka. Finally, Fernandez. Wambisaka has got that again. Now Bruno Fernandez once more. Soboschlai very quickly on the scene. And Salah back defending ends up with the ball at his feet. Fernandez peels away, putting his right hand up towards his nose. Might have been contact with him on the face. United win it back and play it forward, and then they're caught offside. And it's just so much blood and thunder and played yeah. at 120 miles an hour 
neither side have got any time to hear themselves think so true you don't have a lot of time when you're in possession of that ball out there before someone's snapping away at your heels I think United again got to keep the front three involved in this game first half they did that brilliantly they were always alive and always ready seemingly to maybe try and get a shot away or punish Liverpool they've just gone out of the game a little bit United's front three Liverpool trying to get their front three into the game right now Mo Salah the score of what at the moment is the winning goal Liverpool work it back from the edge of the United penalty area all the way back towards halfway. Now they come forward again. Nunez played it by McAllister onto his right foot. Oh, good save from Anana. What a shot. Everyone was expected to go across towards the far post and he went for the near with blistering power. And Anana had to be at his most alert to stick up a left hand and flick it around the post. Great play from Darwin Nunez. Gets it in the box on a, a really acute angle. Ten yards out. Stands Rafa Baran up and drops the shoulder, shifts it very quickly onto his right foot, and he belts that towards the near post. It's a brilliant stop from Andre Anana. One hand gets a big pour on it, send it out for a corner. Andy Robertson comes across to take what is Liverpool's fifth corner. They've had all three in the second half. Ball inside the six-yard box, right-footed effort from Diaz. Hit Hoyland. Back out for Robertson. Deep across in this time, flicked on by Nunez. Salah has brilliantly been able to keep it alive. Great reactions just to spin the other way than he was initially going. Stop it going out of play for a goal kick. And he's rewarded with a throw, which Liverpool will take level with the edge of the Manchester United penalty area. 18 minutes gone in the second half with Torque Sport. United 1, Liverpool 2. United led for the vast majority of the first half. And Liverpool scored twice right at the end of it. Endo now back towards halfway for Van Dijk Soberschlei Liverpool just taking the opportunity to calm things down trying to get Hoyland and Garnaccio to do a little bit of running Gomez back for Jarrod Kwanza Kwanza who's playing in his first quarter final he has started every Liverpool FA Cup tie so far this season they've got a few who are playing in the, the first quarterfinals of their careers for Dean Kelleher the goalkeeper's another here's Juan Bissaka Mainu who is as well Salah played forward and straight to the chin of Juan Bissaka United can't get a foot on the ball the rain is no. coming down with real ferocity now and it, it's matching United's mood which is increasingly dark because they can't get a kick in the last six or seven minutes yeah Liverpool now in control of proceedings as we speak Van Dijk, Kwanzaa and Co closer to the halfway line. Varane and Lindelof always getting ready to backpedal a little bit and that's the way the game is going. Now Liverpool bring it forward again here with Sobeschlag. Good ball from him. Salah inside the penalty area working onto his left foot. Didn't get the power and it was claimed by the diving Anana. Yeah, good stop. Not one of Mo Salah's finest. Whenever he's cutting in on that left foot from a tight angle, we've seen him so many times curl it into the far corner. It's exactly what he tried to do, but Andre Anana was every bit equal to that and just leapt to his right just to grab it. But I mentioned not quite seeing enough of McTominay, Copy Minor with the ball at their feet. And in turn, that means that Garnacho and Rashford and Hoyland are starting to spectate a little too much. You've got to keep those boys involved. Always keep your strikers right involved in the game. They're the ones that are more often not going to get you back into it. Well, it is the first ever FA Cup quarter-final between the two sides. The last five FA Cup meetings between them have been won by whoever's been at home. Last time the away side won in a cup tie in any competitions between these two was in 1960, when United won 3-1 at Anfield. And as I mentioned right at the top of the game, Liverpool haven't won a cup tie away to United here since 1921. But they're within 25 minutes or so of doing that now 2-1 they lead with Endo in possession Soberschlein they would have motor towards the edge of the United box Maynard did well came back stuck a foot in his clearance at Quanso with a slight misjudgment he remedied the situation beautifully and was able to turn then he's put under pressure by Bruno Fernandes with a, a slightly 
less than well intentioned pass from Soboslai, uh, but he, he got it. Kranzer got it under control, and Liverpool calmly have things on halfway again. With Alexis McAllister, ball from him to Endo. And Liverpool, over the last five minutes, have been happy to just try and slow things down a little in this situation. They're taking control, having more possession now than ever before, and yeah. making sure they're looking after the ball and stopping United on the counter attack. Salah, Endo. Salah. Here's Kranzer. He's put under a little bit of pressure from Alejandro Garnacho. United are going to be the first to turn to the bench, and Anthony is going to be the player who will be coming on. So, whether that will be Hoyland that comes off, and they might move Rashford into a more central position. I'm just thinking of the fact that Hoyland's looking tired, and it's his first game back. Here's Nunez racing forward. Oh, oh. this judgment from Anana. He sliced it strongly enough that he got it out of play for a throw. He was trying to punt it up towards the Stretford end. Yeah. And it went off his boot at 90 degrees instead, but he's got away with it. Yeah, he shanked that one horribly, but doesn't matter. He's in the right position, at least to try and deal with that. Because Darwin Nunez was bearing down on him. So he had to be smart about his work. He came out at the right Rate of knots and it just didn't make the best contact. But yeah, Anthony below us about to come on. The big question now for Ten Hag: Do you need McTominay and do you need uh, Copy Minor? Do you go with one in there now and just try and combat and cope with Liverpool as best you can and have something else up front to ask a question? Now Dallo trying to clear has miscued it. Salah's made his way forward. Nunez has got it instead. Then he looked for Salah and Wan Bissaka on the slide gets it away. He's going to be coming off in a moment as well. And Salah thought he was offside, realised he wasn't, and then played the ball inside the penalty area after Gomez's pass. United cleared a halfway. Endo brings it forward, and he'll work it out towards the far touch line. And forward they come again, Liverpool, with Diaz slowing things down once more. But in the paces, injected into it. Nunez takes a tumble inside the box, play goes on. Liverpool come back out again, taking two steps uh, backwards to take two steps forward. In fact, yeah. more than two steps back, they've gone all the way back for Virgil van Dijk. Harry, and Maguire's going to come on as well. Harry Maguire as well will be coming on. So we'll see there's maybe a change of shape. We'll see whether they go three at the back, United about to find out but if Liverpool in this spell take a little bit of care at the top of the field they put this game to bed now because they're totally dominant it's easy in United they're trying to prize them out of position they're waiting for that right moment to provide that all important pass they've been much the better team now for 15 minutes they need to make it count in this spell just over 20 minutes to go Salah threading it through but it's another poor ball straight through for Andre and Arna and so we understand it's going to be Wan-Bissaka who's going to be coming off Andy so they could shuffle things around they could move Dallow to right back Lindelof back out to left back where he's been playing and have Varane alongside Maguire yep. or they could go with a three yeah they can indeed Anana playing it calmly out of the box for Maynou Maynou to Victor Lindelof Leeds have won by two goals to nil we'll get the details from Natalie in a moment when United make this double change Varane bringing it forward for Scott McTominay he goes out towards the United right for Bruno Fernandes. High ball four from him. Rashford letting it run. And Garnacha had no opportunity but to do otherwise. As somehow the ball has evaded the pair of them and gone out of play for a goal kick. Let's find out then how Leeds have gone back to the top of the championship. Natalie? Leeds United 2, Millwall nil, And it was goals in each half for Willie Nonto and Dan James that take Leeds to the top of the championship table. Millwall had some good chances in the second half, but the best defence in the league stood firm and Leeds march on undefeated in the league at Ellen Road this season Millwall stay 16 four points above the drop zone Leeds United 2 Millwall nil. so Leeds top their goal difference one better than Leicester's they've both got 82 points but Leicester have a game in hand they're both a point clear of Ipswich who won 6-0 yesterday and Leeds and Leicester nine clear of fourth place Southampton who've got a game in hand on Leicester and two in hand on Leeds. They haven't played this weekend because they were supposed to be playing Leicester. That championship scenario at the top is mouth-watering and you all hear the final 9-10 games for all of those teams on TalkSport 2 and the pick of the games on TalkSport. The TalkSport network with 
the climax to one of the best EFL seasons for years and you'll hear it with us the ball has gone out uh, for a throw uh, so just to clear up those changes that have been made for United it's Anthony and Maguire who have come on for Hoyland and Wambisaka. Yep, they have. Harry Maguire's gone right-sided centre-half. Victor Lindelof now has the job of trying to tie Mo Salah down. He's gone left-back. Dallow back out to the right-back position. And Harvey Elliott as well has come into Liverpool's midfield. Yeah, he's replaced Dominic Soberschlein. Salah coming in from that right flank, trying to turn it onto his left foot. Maynard came back, threaded it back to his keeper who clears but there's a real sense of control about Liverpool with 20% yeah. of the game to go because United have just been restricted really to rare counter-attacks but they are on one now after a crunching challenge in the midfield the ball's with Garnacho. little deflection on his cross in Van Dijk slams it away I think he's gone out of play for a throw rather than a corner but Liverpool can justifiably so that they deserve the lead over the, the whole piece as things stand right now. Yeah, they do. Been impressed with them second half, Liverpool United. Anthony trying his luck, and that one's gone just wide of the diving. Keller, who I think probably had it covered down at his near post. Well, how they could do is something from Anthony. He's so much the focus of a lot of criticism that comes United's way. He's just come off the bench, he's in that right side where he'll come in on his left foot. Took a shot there but never really hit it with any serious belief or intent. He was never going to worry Quigin Kelleher, that one. Menu. Bruno Fernandes getting away from Elliot. Out to the right-hand side of the penalty area. Scott McTominay, deep ball in from him. Brought down by Garnacho on the left-hand side of the penalty area. Garnacho for Bruno Fernandes, who snatched it with the outside of the right boot. was going wide, but was blocked. Back out towards Garnacho. Garnacho trying to get towards the byline and turn Joe Gomez, but he slipped on this greasy top surface. And Liverpool can get it away. And then Salah is caught by Kobe Mainu. Liverpool have a free kick and another opportunity to slow the game down. 16 to go and it's yeah. United 1, Liverpool 2. Good play, Mo Salah. Pick the ball up. 10 yards short of the halfway line. Right in front. Copy Minor it was who just clipped him, hits the floor. And Liverpool have possession once more. They've been better. They've taken more care than United. United now playing very much on the turnover. Just looking for a counter. That's all they've really got. They're not able to stitch anything significant together, not able to hold the ball for long enough. Is it going to be a ninth home defeat of the season for Manchester United in all competitions? McAllister, Salah, Salah for Harvey Elliott on the right-hand side of the area. He comes inside, a little looping deflection as it hits Lindelof, and it goes out of play for a corner. So much to react to from this game alone, let alone everything else that's happened this weekend, but... And apart from Faker, or others want to hear your thoughts on anything. 03717223344. And you can book your calls now. Your chance to have your say on national radio at the conclusion of this game. We will also be hearing from the headline makers and the two managers. And we will hear who's playing who in the FA Cup semi-finals on the third weekend of April. That's all to come from the conclusion of this game. Liverpool are in control, 15 to go, corner work short, Salah bending it in, but it's too high for Nunez. There might be an element of frustration for Klopp that they yeah. haven't put this to bed now. No, I think you're right. And actually, Mo Salah's been as guilty as anybody second half, been in so many good positions and situations, and has either not got his shot away or the pass he's looked for hasn't been on and hasn't quite found its target, but I think... We've seen Jurgen Klopp turn away in frustration three or four times when Mo Salah has had it. A couple more changes here, Jim. Yeah, and the Liverpool changes. We're going to see Cody Gakpo and Connor Bradley. So the Northern Ireland international will come on. And he is going to be replacing Andy Robertson. So Gomez the left back and Bradley on at right back, you think. And Gakpo for Salah is the other change he's not been at his best today no. Mo Salah on his no. you know it's only his second start uh, in the 10 weeks or so because yes. of uh, injury and international duty but when you're not at your best and you still leave the field potentially as the man that scored the winning goal correct not a bad position to be in no absolutely right yeah he's still got a bit of a way to go 
yet before we're going to see Mo Salah purring at his absolute very best but got that all important second goal just before half time out of nothing really McTominay smacks it away to the Manchester United left for Garnacho. if FA Cup quarterfinal weekend has told us anything it's that these ties really aren't over until they're over just ask Coventry City fans there's Mainu back for Maguire Chelsea scoring twice in stoppage time to take their game away from Leicester it was 2-2 going into stoppage time Coventry 2-1 down yesterday going into stoppage time uh, Manchester United still with lots of time Garnacho trying to get around the back of Bradley wins the corner Bradley stuck to his task, just caught underneath the flight of the long ball ball for a moment, but he recovered in time to block the cross. It is a corner to United. Yeah, good strength there from Garnacho just to resist the challenge from Connor Bradley. That big long ball that skipped through into the box, and Garnacho was after it, gets his team a corner. Christian Eriksen will be coming on in a moment. In comes the corner from Bruno Fernandes. It's very deep. Heads go up for it. It uh, has come off the top of Harry Maguire. And goes back out towards Anthony in behind him. Anthony's cross is easily headed away. Back in from Maynard, who may well be the player that Ericsson will replace. Anthony's got it. Back for Kobe Maynard again. Maynard clipping it in. Fernandez letting it run. Garnacho on the left-hand side of the area. Taking on Bradley, pulling it back. Well blocked by Van Dijk in the near post area. And it's clear back out towards Bruno Fernandez again. Fernandez to Maynard. Bradley smacks it away. Diaz can bring it further clear. The Chance break here. is on for Liverpool. All oh, the break is on. He's five against two. Gagpo to Elliott. Elliott on the edge of the area. And they haven't made the most of it. First ball in is cleared. Comes back for Bradley. Bradley to Elliott. And Menu gets that one away. And that should have been oh. Liverpool game set a match. It should have been, Jim. You're absolutely right. Cody Gagpo needs to just delay that pass. He played it too early. Played it too soon. Five against two, as you say. He's travelling with the ball. He's got to just drag one of those red shirts towards him and then give it. Knock the ball too soon, and it just allowed United to somehow get back and, and recover. So Maynou off, and Christian Eriksen comes on to replace him. And what an ovation for Maynou. Well, he's such a young man. So few miles on the clock in the, the grand scheme of it. It's only his 23rd Manchester United game today. Potentially a Manchester United legend in the making. Well, they love him here and yeah. with, for such good reason. I think we all do. I think we all admire what we see from that boy. Again, today it's, it's been difficult for him second half in there because Liverpool have been dominant and have been the better team. But he's... A very accomplished player at such a tender age already. Here's Ericsson, who's uh, a, a little more, bit more gnarled and veteran. And he has it now in the midfield. He won domestic cup in uh, his career, which was uh, won in the Netherlands 14 years ago with Ajax. And Maguire's missed hit that. Straight over Garnaccio and out of play for a Liverpool throw. And they're 10 minutes plus stoppage time away from a semi-final yeah Christian Eriksen is in the that pivot position in the base of United's midfield so he will be the one who's going to get on the ball can he provide something it's been a bit hit and miss for United second half they just haven't quite got to the levels that they showed in particularly the first half an hour Gagpo goes back for Elliot and the blonde head substitute switches the play out towards Joe Gomez Gomez lays it back for Van Dijk, and Van Dijk will take it on and away from Marcus Rashford, back out for Joe Gomez again. Bring goalkeeper Quivine Kelleher into it, and he clears it left-footed over halfway. Dallow will go up for that. Uh, did enough to stop Diaz getting easy possession, but Dallow and then Maguire lose out, and Liverpool will bring it forward again with Gakpo. Gakpo's ball, not the most accurate, rolled away from Elliott. We found McAllister, Bradley bringing it forward, Ericsson side foots it away, down towards the corner flag, hits the flag and goes out of play for a throw, which will be taken on the right-hand side. But Liverpool getting ever closer. Yeah, they just haven't quite been able to find that one outstanding ball into the box yet, Liverpool. 
second half despite the dominance and territorial advantage that they hold I think it was we mentioned earlier about Jurgen Klopp showing his frustration a few times at the fact that they're not perhaps putting this one out of sight for United Bradley has had such a wonderful start of his Liverpool career laying it back for Elliot Elliot to Endo Nando will go further back into Liverpool territory. You're listening to Manchester United against Liverpool in the FA Cup. It's live on TalkSport with Carling, the official beer partner of the Emirates FA Cup. 18 plus, please drink responsibly. We've played 82 minutes. Liverpool's recent FA Cup record is not great. They won it in 2022. It's the only time they've won this competition since 2006. Elliot finding Gakpo. Gagpo winning a corner with a shot that deflects off Lindelof. This would be only the fifth season in the last 22 that they've got past the fifth round. But they're aiming to be the sixth team to win both domestic cups. The first to do that three times. And the semi-final place is beckoning. Seven to go. United one, Liverpool two the score. And referee John Brooks just gives uh, Liverpool the hurry up with this corner that Elliot thought about taking and then walked away. McAllister's already got a yellow card, so he can't be the one that incurs the referee's wrath for time wasting. He will now take it. A right footed away swing, a heads go up for it. Nunez over the bar, out of play. Goal kick to Manchester United. Their need is getting increasingly desperate. Yes, it is. Andre Nana very quickly. Gets the ball back down in the six-yard box, plays it short to Rafa Varane, but just the inspiration has gone out of United's game. There's, there's that look about the team now that are getting a little ragged, a little desperate. Now, Manchester United, being Manchester United, this current version of them, are still able to produce a goal out of nothing. They still have players that can do that. But it's looking less likely now looking more likely that Liverpool if anyone's going to add to their tally it's going to be Liverpool Gagpo to Endo and back to McAllister another Manchester United change is imminent and uh, Ahmad will be coming on for a, a brief appearance Kelleher clears tempo has notably dropped off and that's completely understandable because it was so frenetic for yeah. 70 minutes or so Varane to Lindelof Elliot who's freshly arrived on the scene still snapping away at the challenges Varane to Anana on the edge of the D takes a touch and no then a plate. confident second one got it between Elliot and Gakpo to feed Lindelof now down towards Bruno Fernandes Fernandes ball up the left hand touchline Bradley stretches and clears and the United change will see Varane come off and Ahmad come on. Played 20 minutes in round five, which was only his third United appearance in more than two years. And he comes on now to replace Rafa Varane. So here is the change of shape at the back with a centre-half being replaced by a winger. Dallow. McTominay. A different feel there was to the afternoon when Scott McTominay put Manchester United ahead after 10 minutes. Now Liverpool worked their way back in with that double strike from McAllister and Salah in the space of three minutes coming up the half-time and Liverpool haven't looked back. No. And that chance, Jimmy, had McTominay, didn't he? To make it two. Big, big chance. Liverpool take a throw. Dallow heads the ball away. Now Bruno Fernandes. Losing out in the midfield, Nunez has an opportunity to run at Harry Maguire here. Maguire backing off towards the edge of the area. Nunez turns inside, trying to roll it in towards Harvey Elliott. He's done well to find it. Back heel flick from him. Diaz with a hurried effort that Anana can save. It remains 2-1, and there are now four minutes to go. And Fernandez brings it forward for Manchester United. Anthony making his way for Rashford too. Had the ball got through to Rashford, he was potentially offside. Ahmad letting it run in the midfield. Anthony works it down to the left-hand side for Garnacho. Garnacho can't get himself into a shooting position. Can Anthony on the turn? Yes, he can. Well, he's had such a mixed bag of a Manchester United career. But Anthony is off the bench to equalise for Eric Ten Hag's man. And 
just as it looked as though Liverpool were coasting through. They've been pegged back in the 87th minute. Manchester United 2, Liverpool 2. Yet another twist on this extraordinary FA Cup quarter-final weekend. Incredible. There's, that's Manchester United. That's what they can do. Liverpool just lost possession in the middle of the park. Anthony sweeps it out to Garnacho, backs Connor Bradley into the box, and then surrounded by Liverpool shirts. Anthony pirouettes onto the right foot, right on the penalty spot, and just sweeps it with his right foot. Yeah, his right foot right into the corner. Quivin Keller got no chance of getting anywhere near that one, and how United needed that. And do you know what? I'm delighted for him. Because that guy gets tons, tons of stick. Self-inflicted, a lot of it. But how that will do him the power of good. It's his first goal against Premier League opposition since last April. The only goal he's scored so far this season came in the fourth round at Newport. And he's now scored in the quarterfinals at home to Liverpool. And it's 2-2 with two minutes to go but Liverpool get it forward quickly but Gagpo right inside of the area and Anana blocks the initial cross that comes in with his hand Elliot tries oh! to clear it in he's hit the post and it comes back out for Diaz Diaz trying to get a shot in eventually when he can it'll come through to the right hand side of the area find Elliot offside how has that not gone in? oh incredible stuff but what was most bizarre was the fact that the ball was played down the line. Cody Gakpo made a good run in behind. Andre Anana came sprinting out the goal right to the edge of the area on the angle to deny him. Once he denied him, he stayed there. It's like, get back in your goal, get back between the posts. He actually made a good stop. The ball eventually comes to Harvey Elliott and his drifting cross comes short. Hits the upright on the far side. United somehow scrambled it away. Astonishing. Just listen to the vibrancy and the volume at Old Trafford. Van Dijk heads the ball away. Ericsson, McTominay. Roop's going to go off the place if United score again. Here's Anthony. Oh, it's deflected across the face of the six-yard box. Picked up by Garnacho. Garnacho gets to the byline. Crosses too deep from him and goes straight out of play for a Liverpool throw. I don't think even the most optimistic United fan would have seen this comeback even six or seven minutes ago. It looked as though it was all over by the shouting. They were out of ideas, out of legs, and now they've equalised. And in some ways, they're asking the more pertinent questions, albeit that Elliot's just hit the woodwork at the other end. Yeah. What a cut time. Brilliant stuff. Ericsson. Definitely flicking the ball forward, so much spin on it, made it difficult for Van Dijk and Endo, got in each other's way. Maguire heads a clearance away, and Liverpool have a throw, and we're about to go into stoppage time, 2-2 two, two the score. How long are we getting, Jim, do we know? No, I'm going for four, Andy, what are you going for? I'll go for four as well, yeah, seeing I think... that board. <laughs> Your timing is just sublime. Yeah, four minutes up before... <laughs> I had to answer. Here's Kwanza, back for Van Dijk. Van Dijk's five yards outside his own penalty area. Looks for Bradley, it's headed away by Lindelof. Brought down on halfway by Garnacho. Turns it over the shoulder of Elliott, but it's cleared by Kwanza. Bradley knew that Lindelof was going to steam into the challenge and let him win it, but he thought that Liverpool would win the seconds. They didn't. Ahmad can come away with the ball. The edge of the penalty area for Anthony. Anthony to the corner of the penalty area for Bruno Fernandes. Down the right-hand side of the box for Dallo. Cross from him, not the best. Bradley heads it away. Cleared out of Ericsson. Ericsson back for Garnacho. Garnacho given a shove. And it's a free kick to United. No, the referee's indicated a throw, but it is a United ball. Lindelof's going to take it. And we've got three minutes of stoppage time to go at 2-2 on Talk Sport. Which team gets that one important chance now in these last few minutes? United with momentum, with the impetus right now. Can they conjure something else up 
Little backfield flick down the left-hand touchline. Ahmad Nui was offside, left it for Rashford who wins the corner. Goal for either side now. Almost certainly wins it. And this is only United's second corner of the second half. Eriksson's going to take it. Fernandez waits on the edge of the D. Ahmad inside the penalty area. Maguire by the penalty spot. Lindelof on the edge of the six-yard box. McTominay in there as well. Shrepper then trying to suck it in. In comes the corner. Keller has done well. He's paddled it outside the penalty area to the right-hand touchline. Ahmad has fielded that. And he has worked it back towards Anthony. Anthony with a misdirected ball, but Anala can pick it up on halfway. Liverpool push out, getting the defensive line 20 yards outside the box. Good ball. Finally, Bruno Fernandes right inside of the penalty area. Deep ball in from him. Maguire, he can't get there. Garnacho flashed it across past the keeper. It's cleared. High up in the air. Maguire heading it up. Van Dijk heads it away. Maguire going up for it again. Van Dijk heads that one away. <laughs> Lindelof. Now down the United left hand side for Garnacho. Pro to Manchester United with 90 seconds to go. Brilliant stuff. United just kept recycling that, putting it back in that six yard box, and Liverpool kept getting ahead on it, a boot on it, just to send it up in the air. Not getting it away very far, but just giving themselves a bit of time. That could all be on this. Victor Lindelof. Not with the best long throw inside the penalty area. He didn't get the distance, but Tomlin got a bang to the back of the head. Liverpool's clearance not the most effective. Back it comes in from Garnacho. Rashford trying to turn. Little back heel flick, a little bit too intricate maybe. McAllister gets it away. The counter-attack would have been on Bruno Fernandes. is the last man back and stopped Darwin Nunez being oh. in a position that he could break straight through to win the game one-on-one. -on -one. Meanwhile, at the other end, Anthony's got it. Anthony turning into trouble and swiftly out of it. Finds Eriksen to Ahmad Diallo. Ahmad, five yards outside the box to Lindelof. We've got 35 seconds to go. Back for Bruno Fernandes again. Almost playing at quarterback for Manchester United. He's taking it out towards the right-hand touchline. High ball swung in from him. Off the top of Maguire's head. Garnacho attacking it with Harvey Elliott, and Elliott gets it away. Ahmad wins it back, Lindelof, Eriksen, forward, it's Rashford, he's in, oh! and he's put it wide, wow, that was the chance to win it, and Marcus Rashford scuffs it, two feet wide of the right hand post, through, one on one, oh. to win it with the last kick of the game, incredible, I'm looking at the linesman, I'm, thinking, I'm expecting to see the flag go up, it doesn't, Marcus Rashford takes a brilliant first touch. He just has Kelleher to beat. Goalkeeper coming out, making himself big. Rashford goes side foot far post and hits it wide of the target when he, everything said he's got to score. Well, the game started with Mo Salah having a shot from a not dissimilar position that went a similar distance narrowly wide of the post. Manchester United, 2-1 down with three and a half minutes to go and going out of the cup, they equalised and they should have won it with the last kick of the 90 minutes. They haven't. We've got another half hour of this pulsating drama to come because after 90 minutes, it's United 2, Liverpool 2. Well, standing ovation, please, for both sets of players. It's been absolutely stunning, live and exclusive and only on TalkSport. What a cup tie. And I think halfway through the second half, Liverpool was so dominant, you thought they were just going to get a third and that would be it. And then somehow, from somewhere, Manchester United found something. And of all players, Anthony, two goals this season against Newport and Liverpool. Whoever's done that in their career? Extraordinary. I mean, the fact that Liverpool have conceded the goal to Anthony, they should have a long, hard look at themselves. But what a brilliant finish from him. And then Andy Townsend, they almost, almost go and win it. Brilliant first touch, world-class first touch from Marcus Rashford. Yeah. The second touch, not quite good enough. No, I just, an eight, I just absolutely back you up 100% there, what you said. Brilliant afternoon's entertainment. Everybody inside Old Trafford, absolutely loving every second of this. Both teams going at it with all guns blazing and United on the ropes. Just wait, we're all waiting for Liverpool. Tyson Fury's here and I'm waiting for for Liverpool to apply a Tyson Fury type right-hander and just put this one on, put, put United on the canvas for good. They didn't do it and they've allowed them to get back in it. <laughs> Anthony, I'm pleased for him, mate. 
I am pleased for him that he got the goal because sometimes you need a break, you need something to happen, you need something to go for you. And boy, did his team need that goal, and so did he. And then Marcus Rashford. I, I do feel with Marcus, I do feel that's that's what separates him from from being the next level. The super elite. That's so. That's if that's Harry Kane, that's, that, that's goal. Yeah. That's goal. If that's Lewandowski. That's goal. If that's the top boys, that's goal. He's not quite there. He's not at that sort of level. I still expected him to score, as did everybody in the ground. But he missed when everything suggested that he was just going to knock that one in. Well, amazingly, he's just been in discussion, deep discussion with Benny McCarthy, who coaches the strikers here at Manchester United. I think Benny might have given him, been giving him a few finishing tips there, possibly. Might have done. But maybe encouraging him, because it, the first touch was so good. I mean, that's the, that first touch, I made a little noise. It was one of those where, you, oh, what a first touch. It yeah. was superb. It was, and it was right in front of the strip at the end. Of, it, was, it was set up, wasn't it? Oh, it was all set up for the most colossal liftoff this place has seen for years. Um, but it didn't happen it didn't quite happen and now they've got another 30 minutes to go uh, what an atmosphere here as well I mean I've been here many many times over the last few years I think the uh, the nights when Ronaldo was scoring late goals in the Champions League not so long ago there were big atmospheres at the end of those games but this one today probably just about beats those as well the Liverpool fans 9,000 of them played their part just been singing you'll never walk alone as their players went back out to take to the field for extra time and United a big cheer just then you just heard as their players emerge from a big huddle and they're all giving each other encouragement for this extra 30 minutes and I'm delighted for one that the game isn't over I'm so glad we've got extra time Marcus Rashford nearly ruined it with that first <laughs> touch and near miss 2-2, two, two. what an FA Cup tie. The only national radio station with it is Talk Sport. Uh, you can get your calls in later. Faker, others, and Alan Pardew will be taking your calls on an epic FA Cup weekend. 03717223344. But let's get to commentary of extra time. United 2, Liverpool 2 is Andy Townsend and Jim Proudfoot. And it will be United that will get us underway for the first period of extra time. Red shirts, white shorts, banking from left to right as they did. In the first half of the game, and Liverpool in their green and white quarters attacking the Stratford end. John Brooks is the referee, he's just waiting for the signal from the television officials for the restart. And substitutions are always going to play a part when a game goes to extra time. United have got two changes left. They can bring on Amrabat, Mount, Kambuala and Forson. And Liverpool can still call upon Simikas, Gravenberg, Clark, McConnell or Dams. So we're back underway. Half an hour to separate these two sides after 90 minutes just couldn't. Diaz right in front of us. Bring the ball forward down the uh, Liverpool left and he's uh, won a throw. I can see the throw. Throw which will be taken on the, the United right. They've got Dallow at right back. Well, they've got uh, Maguire and Lindelof playing at centre-halves. It was Bruno Fernandes playing at centre-half on his own for the last five minutes of uh, normal time, but the emergency strikers have uh, gone back into uh, more customary positions. So it is really Dallo, Maguire and Lindelof as a back three now, and they've got Anthony and Garnacho as the wing-backs. Bruno Fernandes in the midfield. Ahmad and then McTominay in support of Rack. Minded formation that Ten Hag's got now since they got back in the game. As we've entered extra time, he's resisted the temptation to actually alter that in any way, shape, or form. Harrison looking long for Marcus Rashford, who was a sublime ball that found Rashford for that chance late in the game. McTominay. Getting it back from Garnacho. Garnacho will take on the Connor Bradley. He's beaten him and the cross is clear by Quanzo. It's a poor clearance from the young straight to McTominay in the penalty area. He goes wide of the left hand side for Garnacho. Anthony. Anthony again. And it's over the bar, but the crowd's reaction will tell you. Not by much. Now this time it's on his left foot. He's got Van Dijk coming towards him right on the edge of the box. Centre of the goal. His left foot half a yard then takes the shot pretty quickly he just slips at the vital moment because of that he skies it a little bit it's over the bar that was a good chance for Anthony work Kelleher uh, Liverpool win a free kick in midfield they've got Kelleher in goal they've got Gomez at left back Van Dijk and Kwanzaa 
and yeah, playing in the middle. Bradley's at right back. Then they've got McAllister and Endo anchoring the midfield. Uh, they're playing Gakpo off the right. Nunez at the moment off the left, but he's alternating with Diaz. Elliot at 10. And either Diaz or Nunez at the moment, it's Diaz playing through the middle. Three changes left for Liverpool, two for United. Here's Van Dijk. It's 2-2 two -two with two and a half minutes gone in extra time here on Talk Sport and on Sirius XMFC across North America and the States and Canada. And Liverpool will bring the ball forward. Finding Connor Bradley. Bradley taking up a, a more advanced position. Gakpo to his right-hand side. Gakpo checking, laying it back for Bradley again. Liverpool certainly feel as though they did enough in the first 90 minutes to have won it. And you think back to the that five against two counter-attack oh. that they had when they were 2-1 up. They had so many good situations, Jim, in that midway through the second half. Liverpool must have had six or seven really good situations. And by situations, I mean where you've got players in good positions, 35, 40 yards from your opponent's goal, but you just misplace the pass. You just take the wrong option. And that's unlike them, usually so good in those moments. And even if he got back to when he got back to 2-2, two -two, Harvey Elliott then hit the post. So Rashford to narrowly miss right at the end of the game. What a cup tie this has been. When they were drawn out, Obviously, it's a, a mouth-watering encounter for so many different reasons. But it's more than lived up to the hype. Liverpool bring it forward again to the edge of the penalty area. Here's Harvey Elliott. Elliott to McAllister. Referee has to take evasive action to get out of McAllister's way. McAllister will turn and go back for Van Dijk. All of the outfield players are in United's half of the field at the moment. Elliott towards the edge of the Manchester United box. Elliott again. Just turns with his left foot, plays it back towards McAllister. Now out towards Connor Bradley. Bradley's got Nunez by the penalty spot. Gakpo's got it. Gakpo clipped in, and the header goes wide. Uh, coming onto it, it was uh, a decent enough attempt from McAllister. We'd be disappointed that he couldn't at least work the goalkeeper. Yep. Got that all-important goal for Liverpool, didn't he? In the Liverpool's unprecedented quadruple still on the cards. They've actually only won the traditional double once. It's the only once, you know what I mean, the context in Liverpool's history. 1986, the year that they did that. That's the traditional double. It would, of course, be a, a domestic treble if they were to, to do it because of their League Cup triumph. Ahmad, the furthest forward of the United players. His teammates can't pick him out. Now, Quansom mops up, goes back for Kelleher. Kelleher, calmness personified, getting it away. Dallow on the right of United's three centre halves. Plays it forward for Anthony, back behind Ahmad, who just stood and looked at it for a moment. And then the ball ran out of play. Gomez then tackled the assistant referee. It's <laughs> such a very steep camber there is. off this pitch here, like nowhere else. The pitch basically built on a, on a, on a plinth. Yeah, and uh, the assistant referee very nearly got a face full of Stewart and Hoarding, but he was all right. That was what the ironic cheers were for. United worked the ball for Van Dyke heads it away. And Tomini down for Eriksen. Eriksen to Anthony on the Manchester United right. Am I coming back from an offside position? Christian Eriksen's got it. Back in towards Anthony again, working the angle on his left foot. The shot was blocked. Comes back out for Ahmad. Strong challenge on the edge of the penalty area from him. Foul on McAllister. And it's a free kick to Liverpool. 2-2. Two -two. Now we played 96. Yeah. Great stuff. Uh, again, both teams are pushing and pressing and it's difficult because energy levels are near empty. And so you don't want to make those runs, those risky runs sometimes that amount to nothing, wasting the, the last bit of reserves that you've got. So then players tend to stay goal side a little bit and the game then becomes a little predictable. But both teams, to be fair to them, aren't holding back. They are still going for it. And we've had plenty of changes, so there's some fresh legs out there, of course. You have seven subs on the field at the moment. Here's one of them, Ahmad, out of Garnacho. Garnacho coming forward inside the Liverpool penalty area, wins the corner, the first of extra time off Bradley. Yep, Garnacho just 
taking that ball up to Connor Bradley. Goes down on the left foot, goes towards the byline. And the Liverpool youngster does well to block that out for another Manchester United corner. Which comes exactly midway through the first period of extra time. And uh, a little problem here for Ahmad. Is that, is that a contact lens problem? You get a finger in the eye. He's just looking up to the heavens. The referee's looking concerned for him. I think he's all right. He's going to be able to continue. And uh, actually makes his way, unwatched by anybody, to the far post area. Actually, Gomez has just looked over his shoulder. He's seen where he is. Corner then from Ericsson, swung in. Not enough height on it, and Bradley clears. Comes back out for Garnacho. Howitzer with a shot, which has uh, certainly shaken McAllister, but he's all right. Ended up wearing that, and the loose ball ricocheted 30 yards upfield from him. All the way through for Anana. Long ball over the top. Harry Maguire's still for it. He's in the area. Took it inside the box, but Kelleher claims it over the head of Rashford. Unbelievable 50-yard raking pass through to Harry Maguire on his left foot. He's tried to actually clip it back for Marcus Rashford. He should have had a go. Should have just put his left boot on it and rattled it towards the Liverpool goal and keep your fingers crossed. It's Harvey Elliott now for Liverpool. In the ninth minute of extra time, 2-2 the score. Diaz, Diaz coming in off the left flag, foul by Dallow, and the free kick will be taken by Liverpool about 20 yards outside the box. United had a great run against Liverpool in the FA Cup. They won seven successive meetings over a 50-year period. Uh, but the most recent past, certainly been Liverpool have been dominant winning league games 4-2 and 5-0 here in 2021 and what it would mean for United to deny Jurgen Klopp the quadruple in his uh, final season another Liverpool change is imminent Simicast is going to be coming on McAllister will take this free kick and it's midway inside the United half way out towards the left hand touchline McAllister swinging it in, nice shape on that, it's an awkward one for Anana potentially because it took a little zippy bounce in front of him and threatened to clear him, it would have been on target. Uh, but Anana stuck his hands above his head quickly, able to bring it under control, tries to get it upfield quickly but Joe Gomez uh, patrolling the back line for Liverpool has won it back and he's fall towards Alexis McAllister who scoops it with the outside of his boot down towards Luis Diaz. Diaz has lost it to Dallow. Dallow forward towards Anthony. Rashford's got to check his run to get back on side. He's done that. Anthony to Dallow. Clips inside the penalty area. Half clear by Van Dijk's header. Rashford on the end of it. Plays it back for Garnacho. Garnacho with a little flick. Left footy shot. Oh. Into the side netting from Lindelof who made his way forward from centre half. Boy, he hits it well. He's got absolutely the contact he was looking for there. Victor Lindelof made a great supporting run. Garnacho stepping in. Along the 18-yard line on his right foot, sees Lindelof overlapping, just a clever little back heel in his path. And the defender really fizzes that one right towards the near post top corner, but it's just the wrong side of the goal. Well, he's only scored four in 257 appearances for Manchester United. He's only got seven goals in his senior career, but that would have been some way. He does score there. Change for Liverpool, Simicast for Gomez. And it's been made on the 100-minute mark. Simicas has got some notable cup history with winning penalties and shootouts. And he's straight involved in the action by fouling Anthony and just uh, announcing his arrival. Dallow with a free kick back for Eriksson. Four minutes of the first period of extra time to go here on TalkSport. Andy Townsend alongside me here at Old Trafford for a belting game and your chance to react with Alan Pardew and Faye Carruthers at the end of this game. 03717 You can book your calls now. We'll also have the FA Cup draw, which is scheduled to be eight minutes after the conclusion of this game. So pretty much straight away. And you can hear that here on TalkSport and Sirius XMFC across North America as well. A cup draw, as well as a reaction from the headline makers and the managers as well. Here's Bruno Fernandes, 102 on the clock, 2-2. Ball headed outside the penalty area, and then back into it by Fernandes. A stamp clear by Quanta, he got caught. No complaints from McTominay as the free kick's given against him. In fact, it might have been Garnacho that caught him. It's a free kick which will be taken just inside the box 
uh, by Quivine Callagher. And Liverpool happy just to slow things down at the moment and get to the uh, turnaround and extra time. Yeah, I think you're right, Jim. That real fierce tempo has gone out of the game, as you can well imagine at this stage. And also you have the fear of a mistake or the fear of a, of a, of a run beyond the ball that leads you out of position and maybe cost you. So you can understand now that players start to get a little tentative when it comes to making those runs forward. Anthony, as Jurgen Klopp threw his hands up in dismay. Bruno Fernandes, United with the better possession, that's a good ball for. Now the flag has stayed down for now, Rashford is in and fires it wide. Wouldn't have counted, now the flag, as we all expected, yeah. comes up. But again, hit the target, Marcus, hit the target. You know, sometimes in those positions, you're going for the corner, you're looking for absolute perfection. Hit the target, I'll tell you what, it's ever so close. I mean, look, the flag went up, but the VAR guys would have had the had the lines out, let me tell you, if he had gone in the back of the net. But he's got to hit the target in those moments, he really has. So that was a right-footed effort across the face of goal and just wide of the left-hand post. The opposite to what happened at the end of the 90, where it was a left-footed effort across the face of goal and past the right-hand post. This is Elliot. Gets it out towards the Liverpool right-hand side. Driven ball in from Luis Diaz, who's gravitated out there now. And the cross deflects away and out for a Liverpool throw. It's off Victor Lindelof. Probably, if you were, we're talking about Tyson Fury being here, if you're scoring it round by round, first period of extra time, <laughs> probably 10-9 United, but not a lot in it. Not a lot in it, but they will feel that... They've been the better team in this first period of extra time, which is a minute away from half-time, and I think there'll probably be a, a minute added on top of that. Do you know he's got a green tracksuit on, Tyson, with yellow stripes down the arms? I'll let you tell him. I was going to say, can you imagine the fella on the door in the lounges? It's a suit, I'm afraid, or a jacket. Uh, yeah, no, it's not. Here's Elliot, deflected! Oh! Harvey Elliot! And Liverpool lead again! And he missed a glorious opportunity right at the end of the game to win it. And now, at the end of the first period of stoppage time, he might have won it. A right-footed effort that took a deflection and nestles in the bottom left-hand corner. And he runs across and embraces Jurgen Klopp. And the 9,000 Merseysiders to our right are absolutely euphoric. It's United 2, Liverpool 3. Do you know what? Just when Liverpool had gone a little quiet, the ball comes out to Harvey Elliott. He's about 24, 25 yards out. Hits it hard enough. It hits Christian Eriksen, who throws a leg in the air in front of him to just try and block it. And it sort of catches the bottom of his boot and it zips a couple of bounces off the turf and just shoots past Andre Anana into the far corner. Very unlucky from a United point of view, but absolutely, from a Liverpool perspective, Harvey Elliott doing the right thing. You get a yard of space, why not have a shot? So Anthony bringing it forward for Manchester United now. In stoppage time in the first period of extra time, one minute added, poor clearance, Ahmad's got it. He's on the edge of the area. Now checks back out. Clips it out towards Garnacho. Reverse ball for Rashford. Rashford right across the face of goal, almost along the goal line. Nobody could get there to tap it in. It's out of play for a throw that I don't think there will be time to take. It's 3-2 to Liverpool. And Harvey Elliott scoring just his third goal of the season. Man who started all but two of the domestic cup ties this season. And he's given Liverpool the advantage again. But this time, will they be able to hang on to it? Man United 2, Liverpool 3, at half-time and extra time. Wow, uh, well, there's a deflection. It's a little bit fortunate, but Liverpool will take that if it means they're going to go through to the FA Cup semi-finals. But we've still got another 15 minutes to go. It's a deflection off Ericsson. Nothing Andy Townsend that Anana could do no. about that. Not only to get a deflection aid, it not only hits Christian Eriksen's boot, it goes through Harry Maguire's legs. You know, and it's just very, very unlucky. But you know what? That's football. That's what happens. And if you get yourself in a position to take the strike, go for it, as Harvey Elliott did, you never know. And, wow. 
Well, there is that element of you've got to buy a ticket. Yeah. And if you don't have a shot, you're never going to put the ball in the back of the net. But two of the Liverpool goals have been deflections this afternoon. I'm not saying they don't deserve to be in no. front because the, the possession, the chances they've had. But wow, what a cup time. What a noise from the Liverpool fans away to our right yeah. now that they're back in front. Oh, of course. As you can well imagine. And looking at the two teams in a huddle right below us, aid, Jurgen Klopp barking out a few messages. Eric Ten Hag trying to drag a little bit more effort. Something else. They've got to find United now to try and potentially take this game to penalties. Well, he's given the motivational talk, Klopp. Eric Ten Hag is doing more of the positional stuff, tactical yeah. stuff with yeah. his United players. Let's see which team talk works. Liverpool the are winning by time three Chelsea beat and they are losing and, and Man United are losing by two. Whoever wins Premier in the, 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 the um, Villa one. Um, Leeds beat Millwall 2-0 to go top of the Championship this table above the ones that will be going into the Salford 3 more and one and the National League 2-0 winners at Oxford City. Women's Super League Man City Whatever. We joined up with Chelsea behind them on goal difference after a 4-1 win at Brighton. This is it. There were wins too for Liverpool. This is Manchester the big United, one. And for Spurs Whoever wins in the WSL now will be the well. one. But there's nowhere else you need to be. Only into on talk sport. After going we're to done, Wembley. We'll bring you the semi-final draw. And then we'll be taking your calls on an incredible FA Cup quarter-final weekend. Baker Others and Alan Pardew will be taking those calls and giving you their thoughts as well. 03717 but there's still more of this brilliant FA Cup quarter-final to go. It is Manchester United 2, Liverpool 3. Here's the former Ireland captain, Andy Townsend, alongside your commentator on TalkSport, Jim Proudfoot. And Mason Mount is on for Manchester United. His first appearance for the club since November. His time here seriously curtailed by injury. He's played in three FA Cup finals in his career by the age of 24. And he comes off for only his 13th Manchester United appearance after his move from Chelsea. And he's replaced Victor Lindelof. Yeah. So it's every change becomes more and more attacking for United, through necessity, of course. But essentially now, it's Harry Maguire at the back, nobody else. And Diogo Dallo. That's it. That's it, because Bruno Fernandes, who's just got caught, actually, is kind of in that centre-half position. I saw him join Eric Ten Hag in some detail and he's probably saying where's everyone playing here you know but now they're in that situation United they've got all their forward players they're just looking for someone to find something Gallagher claims a high ball in from Garnacho and falls on you know Andy we've had 49 attempts in Have this really? game yeah 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 25-24 in Liverpool's favour the XG actually United one clear of Liverpool but right. the reality is that Liverpool are one clear of United Manchester United who salvaged the game once really late in the 90 the Anthony's 87th minute equaliser and they need another late equaliser here 3-2 down against the old enemy who remember have never won or haven't won should I say a domestic cup tie away to Manchester United at Old Trafford since 1921 and might be 13 minutes away from it this is the first of potential 18 games they've got left in this season to try and win this unprecedented quadruple. And they've been taken right to the wire, but they lead 3-2. And they're on the front foot here towards the edge of the area with Gakpo's effort. They just lost that. He hasn't really been able to make any impressions since coming on, Cardi Gakpo. Elliot now, who certainly has. Bradley made the run outside him. He's laid it back for Endo. Endo chipping it over the top Maguire coming to meet it heads it away from Gakpo goes out of play for a Liverpool throw 107 gone United 2 Liverpool 3 and it's exclusively live for National Radio on Talk Sport yeah so Liverpool now when you play the second period of an extra time you do know that you can clip it into the channels get someone to hold it up try and draw a free kick get a throw in just gradually start to eat that time up as best as you can you don't have to be in a rush to serve it forward. It hasn't got to go into the box when you get it wide. It's more important now that they keep it and manage the situation. Now Bruno Fernandes with the ball four from his sweeper position, almost playing as a libero now. Uh, he's cut out by Diaz, who slid in and couldn't keep the rebound in. And it's a throw that will be taken by United on the left. If they make another change and Bruno Fernandes plays any deeper, he's going to be acting as a steward. Yeah, he's putting the gloves on. 
<laughs> Here's Anana driving it forward, right footed, long ball, trying to get it over the uh, back of the Liverpool back line. Look at Rashford headed away by Kwanzaa. Brought down by Eriksen, though, to Harry Maguire. Maguire to his left hand side for Anthony. 3 2 to Liverpool. Christian Eriksen's got it. Right footed, too much on that. Maguire had made a darting run forward but it sails over him and Rashford and goes out of play for a goal kick that Kelleher would take yeah and that's just trying to force it Christian Eriksen has always been brilliant at keeping the ball but just there he sees Harry Maguire make a run forward tries to find him with something over distance and he just shoots through for a goal kick to Liverpool who again aren't in a hurry to take it Yaikar for Quivine Kelleher just to underline that point and Kelleher, the third Liverpool player to have his name taken today. Fernandes in the book for United. Kelleher in there with uh, Gomez and McAllister now for Liverpool. Another long ball for Headed away by Maguire. Flicked on by Mason Mount. He wasn't too sure where the ball had gone. McAllister's going to be able to bring it away and take it out to the far touchline. Played down that left-hand side for Darwin Nunez. Another Liverpool goal now. Mike kill Man United off. Nunez trying to take it on inside the penalty area, wriggling away. Dallow's back there defending now. He'll play it to Eriksen inside the box. Just judged it to perfection in terms of the amount of time he had in the penalty area. Rashford being held up physically by Kwanzaa. Wins a free kick on halfway. He's backing in, trying to be able to knock the ball on the turn wide for Dallow, uh, for uh, Ahmad. And he won the free kick. Free kick's taken quickly. And he's now with Anthony to Garnacho. Garnacho to Eriksen. Eriksen back. Bobby Clark's going to be coming on next change for Liverpool. Fernandez firing this force. Headed down by Maguire. And Maguire gets it again. Garnacho comes onto it. Sharp save by Kelleher. Put his gloves up in front of his face and beats it away. Now comes the loose ball down to the left hand side for Anthony. Back for Eriksen. Nine and a half to go. 3 2 to Liverpool. Dallo. Ball four from him. Hinks McAllister. Back out for Bruno Fernandes. I don't think we've seen the end of the scoring yet. But it could be. The Liverpool on the counter-attack might be able to make the most of United flooding the bodies forward. And they've got a chance now. Three against two for a moment. Nunez. United with more bodies back. And Ahmad has done superbly. With the pressure legs, he's come back, nipped in, got it away from Darwin Nunez. Now travels forward, 40 yards upfield. And Klopp is telling... Elliot and Gagpo is substitutes to get themselves back and get back goal side. Maguire to Dallow and he'll bring it forward again. Yeah, United just serving it forward, trying to see if they can make something happen, looking for the ball to bounce in their favour to somebody maybe on the edge of the box. Wants to knock it away for Liverpool from the edge of his own penalty area, but only as far as Maguire. Well, late in the 90 minutes, we made the point that it didn't feel as though Liverpool were under too much pressure until United scored their goal. Now, towards the edge of the 120 minutes, Liverpool are under proper pressure. Yeah, they are. Yeah, every time United get the ball now, they're not delaying, they're serving it forward. Still waiting for the Liverpool change to happen, but United have it. There was a poor clearance, which deflected into the part of Matali. Marcus Rashford! drills it into the bottom right hand corner twice Liverpool have led twice United have pegged them back and Marcus Rashford sets up a barnstorming final eight minutes with the latest equalising goal it's Manchester United 3 Liverpool 3 McTominay helping it forward Rashford taking it first time missed a glorious chance to win it at the end of 90 but he's found an equaliser here great finish brilliant finish this time for Marcus Rashford didn't have so much time to think about that he was under pressure from Jarrell Kwanzaa just slid it beautifully with his right foot into the corner huge mistake from Darwin Nunez who has the ball in a kind of left back left midfield position coming inside on his right foot tries to play an ever so dangerous square pass that gets cut out and then a very clever ball slips through to Marcus Rashford in the box this time makes no mistake to level it up at 3-8 
So Darwin Nunez with a mistake. Luis Diaz comes off. Bobby Clark, who facially is the absolute spit of his dad, comes on. Clark, whose father lost in the FA Cup quarterfinal on this ground 20 years ago. He was a Fulham player at the time. And Clark comes on for just his 14th senior appearance. 3-3, three, three, six and a half minutes to go. Plus, you'd imagine couple of minutes of stoppage time and a free kick to Liverpool here after uh, an agricultural challenge from Harry Maguire who's gone down holding his face there might be further sanctions for him he had his eyes on the ball uh, but he's uh, caught Alexis McAllister I'll tell you what it might have been the other way around yeah the, the, the ball's bounced up there and it's kind of chest height McAllister tries to poke it beyond Harry Maguire. He comes in with his head bowed a little bit. The actual truth be told, neither player's hurt in this situation. They're OK. Liverpool will get the free kick. We're just seeing a rerun of the goal. What on earth Darwin Nunez is thinking of there, I do not know. You play a ball square in the middle of the park and it gets cut out against good players. You get punished, you get hurt. That's exactly what has happened there. And Marcus Rashford, to his credit having missed a couple of big, big chances, takes that one and shows all the calmness and coolness that you require in that moment. Only man in this Manchester United side who has won the FA Cup with the club before. That was back in 2016. He's now scored seven in his last eight games against Liverpool on this ground. 3-3, five minutes of extra time to go. And for all the drama and the roller coaster ride we've had, the most important moment of the day still lies ahead of us. It does indeed, Jim. And you know what? As players now, you're starting to think about it. Every moment of your holiday matters. Whether you're standing tall or sitting pretty. In all the hurly-burly, all the noise, everything that's going on, you do start to now feel the inevitability of penalties. And there'll be players out there now that know they've got to step up and take it. You do, it does start to go through your mind now. Already you're starting to think, I don't want to be the one today. After all the blood and sweat that we've given to fail from the spot. Hamad's just got a yellow card for not retreating as Liverpool wanted to take a free kick. Prance to bring it forward here for Bradley. Through the midfield for Cody Gakpo. Gakpo 10 yards outside the box, Matt with a good challenge. Ericsson just in there to be able to get it forward. Two against two for United. Rashford's got possession. Garnacho in support. Cavalry arriving to his right, including McTominay. Oh! Who slides in wow. and slides it wide. Oh, what a chance to win it. Brilliant pass from Rashford. McTominay sprinting right through the middle of that Liverpool back line like an express train. Meets it on the penalty spot slides in, goes with the side foot if he hits the target, he's sure to score and he puts it wide 3-3 three, three. Gakpo foul, Liverpool take the free kick from the wrong place it wasn't even close uh, they can have no complaints that John Brooks has told them to pull that back but Gakpo's going to leave it for Elliot 117th minute Manchester United 3 Liverpool 3 the privilege has been to talk you through the action here on TalkSport and you can pay this tie no higher a compliment than say that it's lived up to this FA Cup quarter-final weekend and the other ties we've seen it's Cody Gagpo outside the penalty area here for Liverpool back out of the left Nunez flashing it in no little near post flip forth coming from Simicas's delivery from Nunez. And the ball is in the hands of Anana. And Anana has it on the palm of his left hand and he's just spinning the ball and flicks it. And then belatedly bowls it out for Bruno Fernandes, who is playing on the left of three centre halves really for Man United now that they've got this equalising goal. Fernandez smacks the ball out towards the right-hand side. Not for the first time. As soon as he's delivered the pass, he's then bellowing somewhere into the ether. United have one possession back. Three to go. So many tired legs out there. Here's a question for you, Jim. Do you let Anana have a pen? Well, because he's the sort of guy. Things have happened. He's the sort of guy 
was more than confident about knocking one in. You can bet your life. But Kelleher has taken one before in a shoot. Yes, you're right. Renata might get his turn, you never know. Free kick, Mason Mount takes it for United. So we've got two minutes of extra time to go. My guess is that that will be extended by another two. But either way, we're in the last four minutes. Possibly in the last two and a half. Ball through for Kelleher now. Who controls it? Catches it. Cool. What, what a weekend we've had here Cup football, haven't we? What a weekend. Astonishing moments, big moments and dramatic finishes. Incredible stuff. Nunez. Back for Simicas. Alexis McAllister. We've already seen Coventry go through. We've seen Manchester City go through. Chelsea through today. They'll be joined by either United or Liverpool. And we're still no closer than knowing which it's going to be. Ericsson losing out of McAllister. Endo. Able to bring the ball forward. Options to his left. Options to his right. He's trying to slip in Cody Gagpo here. Sliding challenge from Dallow. Puts it behind for a corner. And we're in the 120th minute as Liverpool go across to take it. Yeah, this might be about it. Mason Mount there sprinting back on Cody Gakpo to just try and rush the pass, force him into an error as it was. United desperately hack it away for a corner on the far side. Simicast is going to take the corner. Kwanza stands by the penalty spot. Nunez is there. Van Dijk and Endo all on the edge of the penalty area. Nunez coming forward. Goal for Liverpool now. They've surely won it. High ball inside the area, headed away by McTominay. Endo and Elliot go for the same ball. Elliot's lost it. The counter attack is on. We're in stoppage time. Garnacho. Ahmad. Ahmad on the edge of the penalty area. Ahmad. He scored. 4 3 United. And surely. The decisive ultimate blow. Ahmad takes his shirt off to celebrate, which might well see him sent off for a second yellow card. But Manchester United, with the seventh goal of a magnificent game, lead it in stoppage time at the end of extra time by four goals to three. And with that moment, have we seen the end of Liverpool's quest for the quadruple? Do you know, it's a Liverpool corner headed out by McTominay. Harvey Elliott and Endo just get their wires crossed. And from there, Garnacho sprints and it's 2v1. He rolls it to Ahmad, who hits a left first shot across Quibin Kelleher's left hand. And it kind of crawls, rolls ever so agonisingly inside that far post but it doesn't matter it's in the back of the net incredible scenes here and Ahmad has been sent off <laughs> oh, wow so Liverpool 4-3 down they've got all but two minutes now against ten men to find another equalising goal Ahmad hero and villain in one moment Picks up a yellow card earlier and picks up another for whipping his shirt off to celebrate. Emotions getting the better of him. He makes a long, solitary walk up the tunnel. He's beside himself in tears. So Liverpool with a chance to come again. High ball in from Bradley. Headed down. Whacked away by Mount, away from Clark. Garnacho loses out of Endo. Bradley. Kwanza. Simicash now on the Liverpool left. Right footed ball inside the box. Heads go up for it. But Anthony can bring it away and find Garnacho. Garnacho will take it on. Rashford's forward with him. Garnacho. Bradley following it every step of the way. Garnacho trying to take it down towards the corner flag. Did brilliantly maintain possession. He lays it back for Anthony. And Anthony. Well, 41 a throw, he hasn't, he's lost it. So it's a throw which will be taken by Liverpool. United 4, Liverpool 3. A quite staggering game of football. Kwanzaa. 
Derek McKelleher. Kelleher formed at Van Dijk, who stayed forward now. He's headed it down and straight to Bruno Fernandes. Fernandes brings it forward towards halfway. Clark trying to win it back, Card. Simicast is in strongly, but he's just conceded the throw. The throw that McTominay will take, and he will waste as much time as he thinks he can get away with before taking it. 4 3 United, and they are seconds away from knocking Liverpool out of the cup. Rashford heads the ball back. Eriksen just turns it over his shoulder. And it goes for a throw. Which Get it, guys! And we've now played four minutes of added time at the end of extra time. Well, surely just one Man last Man United! The ball is with Quanta. Not even one last chance. The quadruple quest is crushed. Man United Young have won. Leeds and Liverpool Hill has been eliminated. Get time. in, you Man United. United. Oh, On the my God. Elimination. Glory, glory, and Man United. It and Get gone in on there. To win it in the most extraordinary period of extra time. I'm absolutely godsmacked. This rivalry between these two famous clubs situated 30 miles Goodbye, apart. Goodbye, Liverpool. Has been and my Indian goes strong. Let's there go. That's Chelsea very, and Man United now. Episodes of this rivalry that have been as Oh my freaking God, I'm so happy. And climactic as this one. Get in there. Oh my a God. Simply mind-blowing game. And Liverpool. Wow. As they looked for the quadruple to move a step closer. We're three minutes away from getting the job done in 90 minutes. Yes, so in there, Man top. United. But Anthony equalised. Liverpool then hit the post. Glory, so glory, the Man United. Led again at half time in extra time. But Rashford and then Ahmad win the game for United. On a day yes, that nobody there, here will ever forget. It is the best domestic cup competition in the world, bar none. And we've seen time and time again this weekend exactly why that is the case. An FA Cup tie for the ages. Manchester United make it through to the semi-finals and Liverpool's dream of a clean sweep as an Albina Zambia comes to an end. Manchester United for Liverpool. What three, an amazing game! Well, I feel sorry for people who get don't like in football. there, guys. The joy yes! they would get in their lives if they'd only <laughs> latch on to the what magic that we all feel from this amazing game. This is the game. best stream I've ever done. Stunning stuff at Old Trafford. Top in a strop. Glory, glory, Bears. Man United have freaking won again. Smile on Eric Ten Hag's face. I am so freaking chuffed. up the atmosphere at Old Trafford. And these fans haven't seen anything like this, I would say, for a decade or so. This is what they want. This is what they've been waiting for to knock out and the I've big just rivals witnessed it too. in a game that they probably thought was lost. And then they've only gone and won it. A game, Andy Townsend with absolutely everything and I'm saying that yeah. for the second time today the Chelsea Leicester game had everything this has had everything and more just epic mate. Just get in there mate game. let's the, freaking do it oh it my so god from first Man United right until the wow. 125th or whatever it was and I didn't know which way I'm this was going to end up I had no idea that United could possibly find a way back in at 3-2 it looked like Liverpool had it all done and dusted until wow. just a bad mistake from Darwin Nunez wow. and then a Liverpool corner anyway, and United in true United fashion brilliant. that classic United pacey counter attack they latch onto a mistake 30 yards wow. from their own goal Garnacho travels 70 yards with the ball the and they have that 2 on 1 and the entire man. stadium was screaming at Garnacho to release the ball to Ahmad, a young substitute that's come on and so difficult in these matches as a sub to come on and have an impact. And my goodness, did he have an impact. He hit a shot. It wasn't the most ferocious, far from it, but it was accurate and it slipped inside the far corner. 
and then taking his shirt off he gets a red card and then they've got to hold on with 10 men for another couple of minutes but what a game I don't know how much it costs people to come to a game like this today but let me tell you you haven't been shortchanged you haven't been hard done by it was worth every single hard earned pound of whatever it's cost you to come in here today that was simply magic they've had value for money there's no doubt about that and listen I want to talk about the game and how brilliant it was for me it's, a, it's another one they should look at another one of those laws of the game they should look at you understand why ripping your shirt off and toiling it around your head has uh, been outlawed originally but they've got to change that they've left the kid in tears after his magic massive moment for Manchester United at Old Trafford and you have to feel for him he gave his shirt to somebody in the crowd as he went down the tunnel in tears I mean that's a measure of the player that Manchester United have got on their hands in the future Ahmed but Manchester United are through and a game that Liverpool really should have sealed and I think that's the thing that will worry Jurgen Klopp the chances they had that five on two that Jim was talking about in extra time but they didn't seal the deal one of the five just sort of pulled up and thought no I'll wait if he carries on who knows if they've got you know so many players over that United would never have been able to cope but it's all history now and Manchester United have turned that around and made their way through to the semi-finals of the FA Cup and again you know there's so many times in a season where you think you've seen the best game I saw the I was at Luton losing 4-3 at Bournemouth in midweek the 4 all Chelsea Man City earlier this season there have been so many games this one I think tops the lot because it's two massive rivals going head to head and the loser goes out if United have lost, it ends their season. Liverpool lose, it ends the quadruple dream. So much on this game. And I actually think about it now, Andy. I don't know how United have come through this game, but fair play to them. They could take a lot from this going forward. Oh, yeah. No, you do. I mean, look, you know, they'll be utterly exhausted in there. Jubilant, but absolutely exhausted. Um, and yes, Aid, you're right. You know, look, you, if you can do that against a, a clock team, if you can somehow keep going and keep going... And, and turn that round, then you should be capable of turning around a lot more matches. So we'll see how they fare between now and the end of the season. They've got an FA Cup semi-final to look forward to. Um, but what a game. What a brilliant, brilliant game. You, you know, you, you arrive at Old Trafford on a day like today hoping, I do anyway, as a neutral, I do, hoping that I'm going to see a cracking game. I, I spoke about the need for United to be positive and, the, and then this crowd wouldn't desert them. And they've done that right to the very, very last. And, well, they've got through and fair play. Good luck to them. Semi-final draw is coming up live on TalkSport. Don't go anywhere. We're Bet MGM Sports and Casino. We know things aren't always golden. That's why we offer you the tools to keep your place safe. Set timeouts to always ensure you take a break when you feel like you need it. Set reality checks so you know exactly how long you've been playing. And set deposit limits to help control what you spend. Stay golden with BetMGM. Play responsibly. 18 plus. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. May this year bring you happiness. And XDB's investment plans. Uh, wait, what? You don't know. XDB's investment plans are a great way to start achieving your goals. Absolutely. Choose your desired ETFs, select your funding methods like auto investing, allocate your assets, and you're good to go. And the best part? It's zero commission. Download the XTB app and start passive investing with investment plans. For monthly turnover equivalent of up to 100,000 euros, T's and C's apply. Your capital is at risk. The value of your investments may go up or down. Modern football is all about control. Controlling the ball, controlling possession, controlling the game. If you ever feel that gambling is starting to control you, help is available right now at Talk bandstop.com thousands of people have taken advantage of free support and practical tools like gamban which blocks your devices from accessing gambling websites and apps and gamstop which will stop you signing up to any uk registered gambling website take control of your recovery search talk ban stop the big gift giveaway is now on at arnold clark buy any car and enjoy a free gift Choose from a £50 M&S gift card, 12 free car washes, or one of six fantastic experiences. From an overnight stay to a supercar track experience, there's an option for everyone. Don't miss the big gift giveaway. It's now on 
at every Arnold Clark across the UK. See arnoldclark.com. Nice grooming. It must be great with Skull Shaver products. Smooth and fast head shaving experience with Pitbull Shaver. 90 seconds and done. For face shaving, one line shaver with innovative features. Do you need a simple haircut? Use Beast Clipper. Five minutes and done. Do you need to shave your back or somewhere else? We have easy and fast solutions. For ladies, beautiful and fast butterfly kiss shaver. Skull Shaver products have over 100,000 five-star reviews worldwide. Find out what's new in grooming at skullshaver.co.uk. There will be 14 minutes of extra time. With Betfair's 90-minute payout, you don't have to wait for the final whistle to celebrate. Because your winning bet will be paid out in full at 90 minutes. Betfair. Applies to match odds 90 market or markets with a 90 icon. Sportsbook exclusive. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus. Be gambleaware.org. Das Fußball from Deutschland. Unbelievable. 51 games, 24 nations, one glittering goal. Oh, yes! UEFA Euro 2024 Germany. Coming soon to Talk Sport and Talk Sport 2. On 1089 and 1053 Medium Wave. On DAB, online and on your smart speaker. Full on fan reaction. First. There's the full time whistle. The final word. And would you believe? On TalkSport. Well, the final word is coming up on TalkSport. They're getting ready to take your calls. 03717 But we're still at Old Trafford, as are the Liverpool fans who've gone all quiet away to our right. The United fans have pretty much cleared the stadium. And I think they can't believe what they have witnessed here at Old Trafford. We can't either. An absolute spellbinding classic of a game with seven goals, a red card. And there were some tears at the end as well. After all of that, Manchester United go through to the quarter, to the semi-finals of the FA Cup. And we'll have the draw for you any moment now on Talk Sports. So stand by for that and get your calls in as well to Faye and Allen. 03717 is the number to call. And plenty to talk about from this game from Chelsea for Leicester 2 earlier in the day as well. You may even want to talk about the six-minute VAR check on the game at uh, West Ham earlier in the Premier League. Andy Townsend still with me here at Old Trafford's. We've finally managed to catch oh. our breath after such an incredible game of football. I'm looking across at the Liverpool fans. I almost feel sorry for them, really, to be honest with you. You say value for money. They won't feel that right now. Well, no, maybe they won't. Um... But I think even they'll realise they've taken part in some game. Some game. Look, it hurts when you're on the wrong side of them. Um, and they've been on the right side of a few big ones, haven't they, over the last few years? They really have. So, uh, so yeah, today, not their day. Um, I mean, in the United dressing room right now, they will be bouncing. They'll be oh, absolutely the bouncing. The music will be pumping. The, that, will yeah. be, that will be electric in there. Ten Hag will be waiting for the draw. He'll be eyes all over that, seeing exactly who they've got. You know, and uh, and I'm sure the Liverpool dressing room, I'm sure Jurgen Klopp will be reminding his players that they had it really in the palm of their hand and a couple of bad moments. That Darwin Nunez moment, he's not going to sleep well tonight, I'm afraid, because he knows... I, look, I watched him as soon as he lost possession and Rashford scored. I looked at him and he collapsed, you know, onto his knees and he knew that he's trying to square ball there and it wasn't really on... And in that stage of the game, just clear your lines, just knock it into the channels, just turn United round. That's all you've got to do. But also, Andy, that winning goal, it's Harvey Elliott on the edge of the United box. Yeah. Now, he loses the ball. That can happen. But all of a sudden, it becomes the winning goal for Manchester United. That late in the game, yeah. that's not right from a Liverpool point of view. No, it's not. It was their corner, so they're trying to, they're trying to pinch it. Um, and it was cleared by Scott McTominay, and Endo and, and Harvey Elliott both kind of went for the same ball, and then both stopped. And Garnacho nipped in, got it, pinched it, and travelled and travelled and travelled and travelled right the way from literally five yards outside his own box all the way to about ten yards outside Liverpool's box. And they had that classic two-on-one scenario. And is he going to give him the right ball? And he rolled it into the path of young Ahmad, who didn't hit it great, did he? No. But it but it, it found its way in. It was just out of Queeving Keller, Keller's grasp. Well, we talked about the Liverpool chances that they missed and uh, the chance oh, yeah. to, to firm the game up. Rashford had a couple of really good chances yes, as well. Yes, he did. And yeah. Ahmad, I thought, had done a Rashford there, but he just hit the post and went inside of it yeah. into the net for the winner. 
just uh, amazing. But so many great moments in the game. Um, and, and again, classic FA Cup football. Played at a ferocious pace. Both teams trying to win the game. Going for the win. Risking losing in order to try and gain the advantage and gain in and, 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 and be, being successful and getting in to the semi-finals. So uh, just loved it. Loved it. Look, I've... Aid, like you, we've all been doing this a long time, all of us, and still games like this one come along to leave even, you know, hardened, grisly old warriors like me and you absolutely enthralled by it. We've loved it. It was classic stuff and uh, just an absolute pleasure to be here. Somehow Liverpool fans have found the energy to burst into song as they're being held behind, having seen their team lead it twice but lose. Yeah. That's, that's incredible from them. Oh, well, look, great. Look, and they were as ever very vocal really going for it throughout all of the game and they had plenty of good reason to feel second half that period between I'd say like 50 minutes say 50 55 minutes to about 70 75 it was all Liverpool and they were they were from the halfway line to, to the 18 yard box they were majestic
that is the end of the stream. Thank you guys for watching. What an amazing match that we will always remember. What an amazing... I'm absolutely speechless. And uh, well done for Man United. We've They've done it absolutely extraordinary. It was phenomenal. So, guys, thank you guys for popping in tonight. It's been a very, very long, um, very long stream. But what an amazing stream it's come out of. Absolutely brilliant. Man United 4, Liverpool 3. They are going home. Really sad and live and really happy for Man United. They are going home really happy because they're going to Wembley. Absolutely phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Chelsea are now in the um, in the semi-finals. Man United are now in the semi-finals. Now we just need to know who the other per t person is. I don't know who it is yet. We'll go into the, the the three. There's three teams left, I think. That's what that I think. There's three teams left or four teams left. Four teams left, I think it is. And that means those four teams will be the deciders that will go into the A. No, the FA Cup. Final at the Wembley Stadium. Whoever it could be, we hope it could be Chelsea and Man United at the exact same time. But we will see you at the next game. Well, the next game might be tomorrow anyway, but for the FA Cup anyway, we'll be at the semi finals. So that is going to be a big game for both teams. I don't know how many teams are in the semi-finals. But I have to look it up. But come on, everyone. Subscribe to me. And you will see the best games that I ever see on here. The commentary, everything, you're all you're going to hear. This is unbelievable. But anyway, guys. Thanks for watching. What an amazing night it's been. Please, please subscribe, like, comment, and share. I will see you all in the next game of football. See you soon. What a night.